Kept you waiting, huh? This is Snake. Do you read me? What's the situation? I'm just inside the city limits. This place is crawling with lizards. Ah, AT Corps' unmanned bipedal weapons. Officially designated Irving by the U.S. military. They've spread like wildfire among the PMCs. There are more of those things now in service than tanks. They've got tough armor plating and are highly agile to boot. Your best bet is to stay out of their sights. Unmanned. Pretty soon they'll have put living, breathing soldiers out of work. Even so, that's an awful lot of gecko for this scenario. Their numbers exceed the war price for that region. It must have something to do with Liquid's arrival on the scene. You really think he's here? You'll have to find the Army's operatives and ask them yourself. Oh, and Snake? I went ahead and used the Mark II to scout out the area before your arrival. You'll find it up ahead. Mark II? It's a remote mobile terminal. Sonny and I built it. The Mark II will provide you with a map of the area as well as any battle situation data. You should find it before you do anything else. Okay, got it. The rendezvous point is marked on your map. I'll be waiting for you there. What's your take on Emoticon? I don't particularly like the guy. But it looks like we'll need his help with those ID guns. Sonny's been doing a little sleuthing for us. Drebin, a well-known gun launderer in war economy circles. He's a businessman who deals mainly in selling black market firearms to small PMCs and local militia. Somalia, the Balkans, Lebanon, Darfur, Chechnya, Timor, Peru, the Punjab, Kashmir, Colombia. This guy really gets around. How's he pull it off, anyway? You can create a non-ID gun by replacing the ID recognition chip with a counterfeit version. This enables you to bypass the ID recognition process and use the gun. The problem is that there's still a record of the chip being replaced on the system side. Drebin's an employee of AT Security. He must have connections on the inside erasing records for him. You think the Patriots are involved somehow? I'm not so sure. If the Patriots were running the system from behind the scenes, then a weasel like Drebin would be a real pain in their collective ass. Can he be trusted? Remember, Drebin's a green collar. He makes his living off the war economy. He doesn't let emotions get in the way of business, and he never gets his own hands dirty. The only thing he trusts is money. I share your concern, but what if we keep him at arm's length? Use him only to get intel and the supplies we need. Keep it strictly business. All right. Otacon, I know where Liquid is. Yeah, I'm confirming the location. It's to the north of where you are. Meryl's really changed, hasn't she, Snake? She's a lot more... Self-assured. <laughs> I wonder how much of that has to do with the system. The senses you used to develop through extended training and experience can now be obtained without even working for them. Seems once you're under the system's control, you don't even need experience at all. It even beats that VR training that was all the rage a few years back. Yeah. The growing need for PMCs has led to the creation of a more reliable, cost-effective supply of elite soldiers... It's also made the child soldier phenomenon more problematic than ever. Can the nanomachines do anything to counteract post-traumatic stress disorder? Good question. They might provide a degree of psychological stability. You think so? That geek kid, Akiba, he was really starting to lose it. And technologically, the system should be able to optimize each soldier's personality traits. And that big guy, he didn't seem to be feeling any pain at all. Augmenting the soldier's existing experience and psychological fortitude. But a soldier's gotta have more than that. The times have changed, Snake. Just like Merrill. <sighs> Snake, hurry to the PMC camp. Based on what Merrill told us, Liquid should be there. I knew it. Snake, you're here to kill Liquid, aren't you? That's the mission. Are you going to stop me? My mission is to inspect the PMCs. I'm not in a position to take action. All I can do is stand by and watch. I can't help you, understand? I'm a peacekeeper, here to keep order. Understood. Otacon, what the hell? That was vamp. I'm sure of it. I'll never forget that face. Those were PMC soldiers with him. Is he involved in Liquid's plan? We watched him die in Manhattan. Damn it, he won't leave us alone. Snake, could Vamp be immortal? 
Not a chance. This is the real world, not some fantasy game. I swear, the next time he shows up... Not now, Otacon. Right. I know. Snake, according to satellite imagery procured by Mei Ling, the facility where Naomi's being held is to the north, along a mountain road. I'm sending the location to your map. Mei Ling? What's she up to these days? Taking command of the Missouri, apparently. The Missouri? That's a World War II battleship. The museum contract in Hawaii expired some time ago. I hear it's now being used as a virtual training vessel. No kidding. Not for actual combat training, of course, but rather to get sailors used to seamanship on an analog vessel. Or so I hear. After the mess at Shadow Moses, Mei Ling kind of got put out to pasture. Hmm. Even so, making captain at her age, that's pretty impressive. Rumor has it she caught the eye of some lecherous old admiral who got her promoted. She always did have a thing for older men. Hmm. Maybe it's too early to retire after all. Thinking of taking a little training on an analog vessel, Snake? Huh. No. At this point, I've got no need for any more training. Fair enough. Listen, Snake. When you get there, remember, the conflict between the PMCs and the Rebels has nothing to do with your mission. There's no reason for you to get involved or take sides. That said, creating some sort of impact on the battlefield could produce better conditions for sneaking. The Rebels are targeting the facility being used by the PMCs as a base. This is more or less the same spot where Naomi's being held. If you aid the Rebels, they might get rid of some of the PMCs and help carve a path for you to sneak in. That freak I just saw, with the tentacles, was it using the same octo-camo system as my suit? Yeah. I thought that technology was of your own design. Um, actually... I kind of based it on some design Sonny snagged off the net. And the data came from? DARPA. Huh. <laughs> so in other words, we're on equal ground technologically. Sorry. I guess I should have told you. And by the looks of things, they know I'm coming too. Yeah, it could be a trap. Stay sharp. Snake, there's someone I'd like you to meet. A member of the mission staff. A psychological counselor. Psychological counselor. A lot of soldiers can't handle the stress of battle, end up panicking. She'll be useful in helping you understand the mindset of both the PMC and rebel soldiers. She? Rosemary! Nice to meet you, Snake. This is Rosemary. She used to work as a data analyst at the Pentagon, but moved to combat support during the Big Shell incident. Uh, yeah. She was in charge of Jack's files, wasn't she? After that, she studied psychology. And now she's a counselor with CSP, the Combat Stress Platoon. Yeah, I hear psychological counseling's the hot field these days. Increased combat efficiency and productivity, all without ever picking up a gun. I'll be acting as your personal counselor on this mission. Since the passing of the new millennium, one of the most important issues facing today's military is the mental care of its soldiers. I can also provide advice on soldier psychology from a threat assessment perspective. Contact me anytime. I'll be standing by here at home with Roy, but I'm on a different circuit. The frequency is 147.79. Her advice will have a positive effect on your psych gauge. Survival on the battlefield depends on your psychological well-being. Lose your cool and your body stops doing what you tell it to. Even a veteran soldier like you. I know. Mind, body, technique. Some things haven't changed with time. When your psych is running low, ask her for advice. It'll help keep you in peak condition and focused on the mission. By the way, Colonel, isn't that your house? Well, yes. Then the woman you married, the one that Merrill was talking about. Is Rosemary, yes. Didn't I tell you before? News to me. What about Jack? Jack. Jack, from Foxhound. Codename Ryden. I seem to remember him being engaged to Rose. Oh. We lost all trace of him. Jack's gone. I used to work with the guy. He saved Sonny from the Patriots. He disappeared soon after that. 
What about you? Jack disappeared and you just moved in on Rose? I was consoling her over her loss, and one thing just led to another. She's young enough to be your daughter. Yeah, lucky me, huh? <laughs> now I see why Meryl was so disgusted. Meryl said something about me. Yeah, I believe her words were, I'll never forgive that womanizing piece of shit. I see. Colonel, you knew she was our informant in the Middle East, didn't you? Was it you who put her up to it? Yes. I used my connections in the army to get Meryl the job. You wanted your daughter someplace where you could keep an eye on her. Look, everybody involved in the incident at Shadow Moses either lost their job and status, or in the case of Meryl and Mei Ling, got brushed aside. Meryl wanted to make a comeback, a difference. We can't all be as strong as you, Snake. Some of us can't bear living like pariahs. <laughs> Since Shadow Moses, I've been branded a criminal. I think of it as my own small way of making it up to my daughter, my own flesh and blood. In any case, call Rosemary if you ever need advice. <sighs> Who is this? Snake. That voice. There's an ambush ahead. Government and PMC troops. You could be shot from anywhere. Watch your surroundings. Look to the distance. Is this... Jack? Jack is dead. Snake, I'm at your side. Wait. Snake, can you hear me? This is Jack, isn't it? I am Raiden. Jack is no more. Where are you now? I'm right beside you. Raiden, where have you been all this time? What have you been doing? On a mission, finding something for someone. Finding what? The corpse of Big Boss. What? I was asked to do this in exchange for Sonny's location. Liquid? No, the leader of a small resistance group. Her followers call her Matkapluku. Matkapluku? Big Mama. We'll finish this later. I'll follow your trail and catch up with you. Wait, what about Big Boss's body? It's with her now. Her? What's going on, Snake? Rose, I just got a call from Raiden. It sounds like he's close by. Jack? Yeah. Did, did he seem okay? Yeah, as far as I could tell from his voice. Really? Uh, that's great. Snake, I have a favor to ask. What? Don't let him know I'm involved in this operation, okay? I think it would be best to just leave him alone for now. What happened between you and Jack? After the Big Shell incident, he became unstable. Memories began to resurface from his childhood when he fought for Solidus in the Liberian Civil War. And in the midst of all of that, the baby we had together, it, it hadn't even been born yet. Jack slowly stopped coming home. And when he did, he'd be dead drunk, sometimes covered in cuts and bruises. Roy was worried. He was Jack's commanding officer. But Jack just avoided him. I was all alone. And Roy was so kind to me. He's the one who encouraged me to become a counselor. I know it sounds like I'm making excuses, but I needed to get over it to move on with my life. I'm worried about him, of course, but I'm also afraid of him. All right. I'll keep my mouth shut. Thank you, Snake. Yo, Snake, looking good today. Driven. What do you want? That's cold, man. And here I was about to tell my very best customer about face camo. Face camo? That camo skull cap you just picked up from Tentacle's shell. It utilizes the same kind of technology as your octocamel suit. Using the two together can get you even better results. I'd hang on to it if I was you. Doesn't fit. It's not my size or shape. Yeah, looks like it could use a bit of tailoring before you can sport it. Not my line of work, but... Ain't you got a buddy who specializes in that kind of thing? Hmm. Somebody's done their homework. Hey, is my job. Is that the real reason you injected me with those nanomachines? To spy on me? I prefer the term customer data management myself. 
strapping. Relax. It's strictly confidential. I ain't gonna share it with anybody. Then what did you mix a virus in with the nanomachines for? Virus? A certain virus was detected in my body. Are you saying it wasn't in the nanomachines you injected? Look, you do know there are other folks who could have done this to you. And besides, what would I gain from infecting you? Better for me that you're out there kicking ass on the battlefield. I was watching you, Snake. You're a real piece of work. Never thought I'd meet the man who could take down Laughing Octopus single-handedly. <laughs> she just kept on laughing. Now why do you suppose that is? <sighs> Something in her past. You got it. She's from a village in Scandinavia. Little seaside hamlet known to all the locals as the Devil's Village. Place wasn't known for devils, though. It was known for octopus. See, this was one of the few places in Europe where they ate octopus customarily. Anyway, there's this cult of crazies who for some reason hate the village with a passion. Then, when she was just a teenager, things get bad. These nutcases get their hands on some weapons and attack the village. Overnight, her sleepy little fishing town becomes a war zone. They round up all the villagers and execute them one by one. Except for that girl. They had something else planned for her. Something a whole lot worse than dying. Calling her the devil's child, they forced her to do the kind of thing you'd expect from one of Lucifer's own. After they made her torture her family and friends, they made her kill them. The whole time they were forcing her to laugh, howl like some sort of demon. Like she was enjoying it. What was she gonna do? Say no? They'd kill her too. So she let fear take control and did exactly as they told her. She butchered the bodies of the ones she loved and laughed while she did it. And as she bathed in their blood, it gradually turned from deep red to jet black. To her, it looked like the ink of an octopus. The experience scarred her deep. Ever since then, she hasn't stopped laughing. Only, that ain't really laughter. Why are you telling me this? You expect me to feel sorry for her? Nah. I know you got no room for that stuff in your world. And besides, this is war. Right? In a way, though, I guess it was the right thing to do. What was? Fighting you cleansed her mind. All right, enough chit-chat. There's other beasts out there in them woods. Watch your back. Snake, have you lost sight of the target? Whenever something moves, it leaves a trail behind. Track and find Naomi's trail. I'm not like Big Boss. Tracking isn't my strongest suit. When did you get so good at it? After saving Sonny, I drifted around the globe. In Alaska, a tribal elder taught me some scouting techniques. Drifted? You never went back to see Rose. Rose? She doesn't exist. No. Rose and I live in different worlds, different times. Her world has no place for someone like me. My place is here on the battlefield. Huh. Listen, Snake. Scouting is based on the principles of hunting. There are two fundamentals. Awareness and tracking. Awareness? Awareness refers to locating a trail by paying careful attention to your surroundings. Tracking means to follow that trail. Your target's trail could be footprints, a branch they broke along the way, bent grass trampled underfoot. You need to feel for clues using all your senses. Sound, smell, touch, the direction of the wind. Watch how the animals move. Listen for unusual bird calls. These are signs that someone may be disrupting the environment nearby. You sound like a ninja. Exactly. Ninja are the ultimate scouts. If your enemy is a skilled scout, they'll be doing the same thing. You may be the hunter, but you are also the hunted. To avoid enemy detection, move slowly, little by little. Don't disturb the air around you. Try to make as little noise as possible. Your pursuers will be doing the same, trying to sneak up on you without a sound. 
If you can't pick up the trail with your naked eye, switch the solid eye to infrared mode. That will enable you to see Naomi's footprints and any enemies lying in ambush. Switch the solid eye to infrared. Got it. But the sound it makes while engaged could end up giving your position away. So don't leave it on for too long. All right. Listen to your heart. Trust your senses as much as you can. And you will find Naomi's trail. I'll give it a shot. Snake, the heavier someone is, the deeper the footprint they'll leave behind. Take a look with the solid eye. Deeper footprints should show up darker than shallow ones. But Naomi's footprints ought to be shallower than the soldiers. She's not carrying any gear. If you were carrying somebody, however, the extra weight would make your footprints deeper. So, one of them might be carrying Naomi. That depends. Are some of the prints deeper than others? Look closely, Snake. Nature can tell you a lot of things. You're pursuing a target and her escorts. Look at the grass. It makes a big difference whether there's one man on the trail or many. Follow the path where the grass is trampled most. You need to look at more than just the shape of the footprints. Don't assume you're on the right track just because the print matches the target's shoes. Take a closer look. Imagine the target actually on top of the print. Think. Is the depth of the print consistent with Naomi's weight? Does the stride, straddle, and pitch match her walk? Pay attention. Don't let the hunted fool the hunter. Snake, these PMCs have received some degree of scout training. They can detect the low sound of the solid eye, even though it's faint. So, if I'm wearing the solid eye and get too close, it'll give away my position. Exactly. Switch it off when approaching the enemy. Otacon, they've seen this face too. Yeah, it might have been added to the PMC's blacklist as well. And Merrill was acting kind of strange. Things are going to get hairy once the American suppression troops get here. We'd better get to Big Boss's corpse, and fast. But first, we've got to find Big Mama. Snake, let's go over what we know so far. The streets are under curfew. The only people you'll find out there now are PMC soldiers and members of the Resistance. Yeah, I thought it looked a little too quiet to be a tourist attraction. The Resistance members are scheduled to convene at Big Mama's hideout. So our best course of action is to follow their lead. When you find the Resistance, tail them. Let them lead you to Big Mama. But how exactly am I supposed to find this Resistance? The PMCs have laid a dragnet for Resistance members that covers the entire town. They're using SOP to notify each other by radio of any info collected during their searches. By intercepting those signals, you should be able to reach the Resistance members' locations in real time. Intercept their communications? How do I do that? I've provided you with a new device for just that purpose. To hijack PMC communications, open the item window and select the Signal Interceptor. The interceptor constantly monitors PMC voice and data transmissions. When you've got the Signal Interceptor equipped and you hear the PMC's chatter about the resistance, check your map. It should display the location. Got it. Oh, and Snake, I think we've found a way to treat Raiden. Really? Yeah, we got in touch with Dr. Madnar. Naomi and Sonny are on their way now. They'll be all right on their own. They're a few clicks north of where you are now. It's a non-combat zone, so there won't be any checkpoints. There's even a dialysis machine. It'll take some time, but I think he'll be okay. Good. Anyway, you need to hurry and make contact with Big Mama. I got it. If Liquid gets his hands on that corpse, it's all over. Follow the Resistance's lead. Way to bring that bird down, Snake. Drebin. And you got yourself a souvenir, too. A grenade launcher. Nice. That's a real user-friendly weapon. Not much use to me without an ID, though. I laundered this one free of charge. What's the catch? Only that you give it to me when you're done with it. A weapon with that many decades of rage stored up inside it? Now that's a collector's item. How old was she? I'd say about 20. But she had years of soldiers' rage hidden away in that youthful body of hers. Soldiers? Yeah. 
the soldiers of Ake, a place that hasn't seen peace in a long, long time. She was captured by one side or another and kept caged up like an animal, along with God knows how many other kids. Anonymous violence. Exactly. It's unknown whether her captors were with the government or the rebels. In any case, they got their kicks by abusing these helpless little kids day after day after day. That constant barrage, that battlefield rage slowly built up inside their bodies, their minds. The kids tried to keep each other's spirits up, always clinging to the hope that someone would come to their rescue, barely surviving off of scraps of food. But those soldiers didn't stop. They called the kids parasites and shit-eating ravens, beat them even harder. Then one morning, the soldiers just up and left, leaving the surviving kids to be eaten alive by the birds, almost like one of those sky burials. One by one, their bodies were picked apart by raven's beaks, until finally the flock came for her. But by some miracle, their beaks cut her bonds instead. And like that, she was liberated. In that instant, she was filled with an uncontrollable rage, and it smothered her soul. She ripped the ravens pecking at her to pieces, and then went after the soldiers. And when she finally caught up with them, she waited until nightfall like a hunter awaiting its prey. They say that when a raven cries, a man dies. And that's exactly what happened that night. Screeching and cawing, she killed every last living being in the camp, both the soldiers and the civilians they'd enslaved. In her eyes, there was no longer a difference. The cruelty her friends had suffered, the pain and humiliation she'd endured, hers was the distillation of the rage that decades of war had imparted on those soldiers. Mm. It was her strength and her greatest weakness. You're something else, Snake. You managed to cleanse Raven of her rage. No, seriously. You're the seed of war. In fact, I'd say you might even be war itself. Draven. Maybe it's still too early to tell. You still got half the B&B core ahead of you. Keep your eye on the ball, pal. Huh? Snake, that door is locked. <sighs> How do I open it? Security is shut down altogether. You can't release the lock without activating it. You'll have to log in somewhere. I've got it, Snake. My old office is close by. With the power on, you should be able to unlock the door from there. And if you check the facility records, we can find out Rex's status and who's been in and out. You remember where it is, Snake? Uh, I've not seen it all yet. Just to be safe, I'm marking it on your map. You old geezer. <coughs> <coughs> Snake, the password is 48273. Think you can remember that? I told you, I'm not senile. Yet. Yo, Snake, I finished laundering that real gun you picked up just now. Knock yourself out. It's on the house. Thanks. Time for another bedtime story, Snake. This one's about crying wolf. You don't need me to tell you there's whole nations in Africa tearing themselves apart in the name of ethnic cleansing. Well, she was born into that environment. When she was a little girl, her village was attacked by rival armed factions. Her parents and siblings were slaughtered, and she was left a refugee. She took her last surviving relative, her baby brother, and ran as far as she could away from the war zone. One day, they came across an enemy unit, so she took her brother and hid in an abandoned shack. And then her brother started to cry. She knew that if the soldiers heard the noise, they would find them and kill them both. So she wrapped her hand as tight as she could around his mouth. As the footsteps gradually went away, she came back to her senses. Her brother wasn't crying anymore. Horrified, she pulled her hand away, covered in sweat and spit. He wasn't breathing. They say wolves eat their own pups when they die. She was spotted wandering through the thick of battle, carrying her dead brother in her arms. 
She had visions, too. A wolf walking alongside her. Every night, the wolf would howl and cry, just like her brother did that day. Eventually, she made it to a government-run refugee camp. But by then, her brother's body had rotted away. The camp was crowded with refugees like herself and little children like her brother. Day and night, she was tormented by the cries of babies. The wolf that followed her heard her sorrowful screams and answered. He made his way around the camp, and one by one, he silenced the children. She tried to stop it, but she was powerless to stop the wolf. A few days passed, and on the eve of the enemy's raid, there wasn't a child left. The adults who survived were torn up pretty bad. Of course, there was never any wolf in that camp. She was the one who killed those babies. But she couldn't bring herself to admit it. She couldn't bear the thought of herself going from one baby to the next, howling like a wolf, snuffing out their little lives. And she never did, even as Crying Wolf, a lonely beast forever stalking the battlefield. Snake, fighting with you made Wolf finally accept what she'd done. She was cleansed by you. If the cries she heard of children on the battlefield have been silenced, it's because of you. You ought to be proud. Three down, one to go. All that's left is Mantis. But you should know, Snake, she's been controlling all the other beasts. She's the beast of beasts. Don't let her get her hooks in you. I won't. See you around, Snake. Hold it, Snake. Time to change the disc. I know, I know, it's a pain. But you need to swap disc one for disc two. You see the disc labeled two? Nah. Uh, no. Huh? Oh, wait. We're on PlayStation 3. It's a Blu-ray disc. Dual layered, too. No need to swap. Damn it, Otacon. Get a grip. <laughs> yeah, what an age we live in, huh, Snake? Wonder what they'll think of next. <laughs> so, you bested the last beast. That doll you just picked up lets you manipulate anybody who's got nanomachines in them. Sounds like something the devil's cooked up, if you ask me. Mantis came from South America. She was born and raised in a country racked by never-ending civil wars. Her village was attacked by enemy forces and burned to the ground. This was when she was still a little girl. Hunted by enemy death squads, she was separated from her family. She barely managed to escape with her life. Ended up in the basement of this one building. It was full of corpses that had been dumped there. Almost all of them had been tortured to death. She was petrified with fear. And then... She heard the sound of heavy boots on the floor above her, followed by shrieking screams, the kind that would make every hair on your body stand straight up. She had stumbled across a makeshift torture chamber. Somebody would locked the door, and she was trapped. It was dark, it was dank, and it was full of a wretched stench. She couldn't sleep with the screams of torture victims all around her, all she could do was sit curled up in one corner of the room, trembling. A week passed, then ten days. She managed to keep hydrated by drinking the filthy water pooled up on the floor, but there was no food. Being trapped in that kind of place, half crazy from hunger, did a serious number on her mind. Did you know female mantises eat their mates? The screams went on day and night. She covered her ears, but it didn't help. And then she was saved by a little black mantis that taught her how to block out the screams, how to plug up her inner ears. What the hell are you talking about? I'm saying, Snake, that when she couldn't stand the hunger any longer, she started feeding on the corpses, but only the male ones. She didn't realize who was doing it. In her mind, it was a female mantis devouring her mates. It was like one big, twisted, waking dream. 
There was no mantis, of course. It was all a hallucination. Nothing more than some story spun by another person she'd created inside. Her unstable mind was what made her so vulnerable. Later, they ripped out what was left of her psyche with drugs and hypnosis and implanted the persona of Psycho Mantis. It wasn't her will that controlled the B&Bs. It was Psycho Mantis, half assimilated into her soul, pulling the strings. Screaming Mantis was just another puppet. Anyway, she survived several weeks down in that hellhole and finally got back to the surface. But the screams in her head didn't subside. They would always be with her. Only this time, they weren't real. The inner earplugs didn't work anymore. The Black Mantis had disappeared. There was no place left to escape. Which is why she was always screaming. To drown out the ones in her own head. But it's over now. You freed Mantis from that dark nightmare. Hmm. The last of the beasts. You got it, pal. Well, I'm done playing storyteller for a while. Now get going. GW's waiting. And this time, you get to make up the ending. Okay, Snake. Let's start with the basics. I'll provide instructions via codec. Some of these controls are new, so it's best if you practice now before you get back into the thick of things. Listen carefully to my instructions and then give it a try. I've also set your codec so that you can receive short messages in listen-only mode. With MCON implemented, there's less chance of you accidentally giving away your position. Are you okay? It's too dangerous to stay in one spot. Get prepped, then get out of there as soon as possible. Okay, Snake. Keep practicing the basic controls for a while, just like I told you over the codec. Remember what I told you, and then try it out for yourself. If you forget the controls, you can review them by pressing the Start button to open up the menu screen, and then go into Briefing. Snake, you should keep practicing the basic controls until you've got them down pat. Wait until you're in the thick of things, and it could be too late. Use the left stick to move. Depending on how much you tilt it, you'll either walk or run. Keep practicing until you get the hang of it. And don't forget, the faster you move, the more noise you'll make. Pressing the crawl button changes your stance. Hold the button down to get down on your belly, or tap it quickly to switch between squatting and standing. Go ahead and give it a few tries until you get the hang of it. All right, it looks like your training's really paying off. Keep at it until you've got the hang of the basics. It'll make the mission ahead that much smoother. Snake, you're not practicing your basic controls at all, are you? At this rate, you'll end up panicking come mission time. Listen. Practice the controls just like I explained until you've got them down cold. If you've forgotten the controls, you can review them by pressing the Start button to open up the menu screen and then go into Briefing. Snake, I don't think you've practiced the controls enough. Snake, the fighting between the PMCs and the militia is heating up. We'd better practice those basic controls now, while there's still time. To press up against a wall, stand in front of it and press the Action button. Move to the end of the wall while pressed up against it, and you can peek around the corner or do a jump-out shot. You never know when these techniques are going to come in handy. When you're lying on the ground, press the aim button and move the left stick to the right or left to shift in that direction. Press the crawl button while you're shifting to roll. That'll enable you to move around without sticking out too much. Hey, Snake, since when did you learn how to use CQC? I got the training back when I was in Foxhound but I never used it in actual combat. You had those skills all this time and never used them? Why? The uh, man who taught me was my former commander in Foxhound. Big boss? Never felt right using a technique learned from a man who'd betrayed his unit. Thinking back, CQC as a concept was way ahead of its time. Nobody was using it yet. Not the Green Berets or the SEALs or the CIA paramilitaries. And then earlier this year, the Pentagon declassifies Big Boss's file for some reason. All of a sudden, his story is the stuff of pop culture. Books, magazines, the net. And now people are taking another look at CQC. The war criminal, reinvented as a hero. Big Boss's exploits as a Cold War secret agent back in the 60s have made him a legend. Hmm. 
The less people know about the truth, the more they can fantasize. Is that why you finally decided to use CQC? Because it's no longer just his anymore? The CQC soldiers use nowadays is a pale imitation. They're learning from reading about it. I learned through doing, and there's a world of difference. Then you want to teach them the real thing. The way you learned from your fa- I mean, big boss. That's not it either. Some things aren't meant to be passed down to future generations. When some guy comes at me using that cookie-cutter imitation of CQC, my body just reacts naturally, that's all. Ah, oh, I get it. An eye for an eye. Well, maybe not quite. I reckon they'd lose more than just an eye when going up against you. Snake, the gecko are starting to hunt down the militia. Those things are deadly. You've got to avoid their close-range attacks. Stay out of that monster's sight, Snake. Judging from the state of things, I'd say north is your best bet. Head north. Snake, head north from your current position. Got that? This isn't a fight. It's a slaughter. With the firepower they've got, the militia don't stand a chance against the gecko. Be careful not to get dragged down along with them. Snake, your first order of business is to rendezvous with the Mark II. Just follow my instructions and use your octo camo to make sure the enemy doesn't see you along the way. Snake, you know how that first gun you found stopped working? Well, from what I can tell, it looks like the problem was with the ammo. The ammo? I'm betting it's because they were using cheap local ammunition. The ammo probably triggered abnormal combustion, which excessively raised the pressure and caused the cartridges to stick in the chamber. It's a pretty rare phenomena. I guess you just got lucky. Hmm. More like unlucky. Look on the bright side. It means there weren't any problems with the gun itself. I don't think it'll happen again. <sighs> Snake, the weapons you pick up will be temporarily stored in your backpack. To use one, you need to be carrying it on your person. First, press the Start button to open up the Mark II's menu screen and choose Weapons. Then move the cursor to the weapon you want to use and press the OK button to select it. The same goes for your other equipment, too, except you choose items from the menu screen. There's a limit to how much gear you can carry. Keep that in mind when considering what to take and what to leave behind. If you ever forget how to use the controls or just need a refresher, review them by going to briefing on the Mark II menu screen. Snake, the PMC soldiers are using ID guns. ID guns? See how the word locked appears in the weapon list? Yeah. ID guns are equipped with locks. As long as the lock is engaged, you can't pull the trigger. Any suggestions? The locks are only disengaged when they recognize the nanomachine ID inside a soldier's body. Anyone not possessing nanomachines keyed to the system, or anyone who's keyed but not authorized to use that weapon, won't be able to pass the ID guns verification process. So I can't use PMC guns. I'm afraid not. You're not registered with the system. And it's not just weapons, either. Vehicles, buildings, everything used for military purposes is secured with this ID control system. Without the proper IDs, it's impossible for PMCs or state armies to fight. Think of it as a soldier's dog tag, only at the nano level. So, I shouldn't even bother picking up ID guns. For now, at least. But they might come in handy later on. Snake, I'm sure you've noticed the dust bins used for trash collection in that area. I'll bet they're big enough to fit inside. It could come in handy if you need to stay out of sight until the coast is clear. To get inside a dust bin, stand in front of it and press the action button. Stand in front of it, press the action button. Got it. Once you're inside, tilt the six-axis wireless controller to sneak a peek outside. You can also launch a first-person attack that way. When you're ready to get out, press the action button again. Snake, I know you already know this, but there's no point in hiding if the enemy sees you doing it. Make sure no one's watching. How did it go? Did you manage to hide? Yeah, I did like you said. <sighs> Looks like this is where they dump their household trash. Huh. How can you tell? Because it stinks in here. Bad. Leftovers from last night's dinner, probably. Ugh, leftovers. Mm, and there's some 
Bugs crawling around on my face. Ugh. It feels like roaches. There's a whole bunch of them scurrying around. <sighs> Make sure you get the smell of them off you before coming back here. Yeah, I'll see what I can do. Ugh, seriously, doesn't it make you sick? I'd crawl into a toilet if it kept me out of sight. Huh. Something crawling up my leg. Ugh, I can't even imagine. Ugh. You know, you might want to get out of there as soon as the coast is clear. Yeah, not the best place for a nap. No kidding. Snake, where are you now? Trash can. A trash can? Um, Snake, you've, uh, attracted a swarm of flies. I think that odor's really stuck on you. Yep, I stink. The stench must bother you, right? And it can't be good for your mental well-being. Also, the fumes could alert nearby enemies to your presence. Odor carries down wind, so be especially mindful of enemies in that direction. Believe me, I know. I learned all about how deadly smell can be back when I was a scout. Then why not hurry up and find some way to get rid of the smell? Right. Snake, I really think you should get rid of that odor you're giving off as soon as possible. I know, but how do I do it? Hmm, oh, good question. I don't see any showers around here. That's it. I've got it. All you've got to do is get whatever's causing that smell off your body. <sighs> How? Well, by rolling around on the ground. Rolling around? Right. I remember reading somewhere that horses roll around on the ground to get dirt off their bodies. You should try the same thing. I bet it'll scrape away the source of the stench. You mean like a sand bath? Yeah. It's basically a shower. For horses. Okay. Give it a shot. I'm sure it'll work. Here goes nothing. Hey, Snake. You know those flies you had for company earlier? I think they might have been attracted to your stench, but now they're gone. Yeah. Now that you mention it, the smell's gone, too. Any idea why? Uh, all that rolling, maybe? I rolled around on the ground a few times, and I think the bugs were gone after that. I see. Your rolling around must have scraped off whatever was causing the bad odor. The smell went away, and the flies with it. If you ever find yourself stinking again, stop, drop, and roll. That'll get rid of the smell in no time. Easy enough. Stop, drop, and roll. Otacon, those two-legged machines, they're not like the Metal Gears I'm used to dealing with. Right. Strictly speaking, though, they're not Metal Gears. What are you talking about? The gears you fought before were all basically designed and produced to serve as nuclear platforms. Ray was an exception to the rule, but even that was an anti-Metal Gear weapon designed to defeat the Metal Gear clones popping up all over the world. Its value was still measured in terms of the framework of nuclear strategy. It's been 25 years since the end of the Cold War. We live in a world of regional conflict and asymmetric warfare, and it's getting worse every year. The age of the war economy is upon us. The value of Metal Gear as a weapon, the very concept itself, has changed with the times. You might even say it's evolved. Nowadays, a Metal Gear needs to be more than a nuclear attack platform. It needs to be adaptable, well-suited to fight in large numbers, traverse urban settings, and work alongside infantry. The Gecko were the answer. There are different types of gecko designed for different missions, and not all of them are equipped with nuclear capabilities, so technically, they're not Metal Gears. Of course, there are still some of the old Metal Gears around. Their primary job is to launch nuclear strikes. But these days, gecko are the first name in bipedal war machines. They may have gotten smaller, but they're as ferocious as ever. Whatever you do, don't underestimate them. Don't worry. I wasn't planning on it. The Gecko's threat detection and attack control systems are composed of electro-optical sensors. Basically, it's a system of TV cameras that detect visible light and infrared radiation. The Octocamo suit you're wearing now is designed to fool both the naked eye and infrared sensors, making it extremely effective against Gecko. But Otacon, one of those things just saw me. Octocamo's pretty good at fooling Gecko, but it's not perfect. When you were caught back there, the gecko's tentacle got pretty close, didn't it? Hmm. 
That tentacle's tip is also equipped with a sensor system. If a gecko gets up close and personal like that, no camouflage is going to save your skin. My advice? Don't let that happen. Making it extremely effective against gecko. Yeah. They haven't spotted me so far. Must be working. Yeah, but just because it's worked so far doesn't mean you can breathe easy. What do you mean? Gecko have sensor systems on the tips of their tentacles, too. Octocamel's great so long as there's some distance between you and the target, but it might not be as effective if those tentacles get up close and personal. Watch out for those tentacles. Don't let them get too close. The gecko appear to be designed for high mobility, even in cramped urban environments like this one. Yeah, you're telling me. Their leg's main drive uses artificial muscle tissue, genetically engineered from the cloned ES cells of ungulate embryos. This gives them quick response times and a high output-to-weight ratio. Basically, the gecko have the legs of a star athlete. That's what makes them so agile. But it's also their weak point. Those things may have an amazingly high output, but they're also deployed in limited indoor search and destroy operations, so there's a limit to how heavy they can make the frames. Otherwise, they'd drop right through the floor. To keep its weight down, the gecko's defensive armor is concentrated on the head, where the central computer is housed. The legs aren't defenseless, but by comparison, they're a pretty soft target. In other words, targeting their legs should at least slow them down, right? Exactly. Keep it in mind. It could save your life. Hey, I just thought of one more thing. Now, this is just rumor, but apparently Gecko are especially vulnerable at the top of what you'd call their... necks. Where brain meets body. Exactly. There's a line in there that pushes power to the head components. Armored vehicles tend to be the weakest on the top. In the case of a Gecko, they probably have to keep the armor thin. Structural reasons. Which means... Break their legs, aim for the crown. A rifle shot could even deliver the final blow. It couldn't hurt to try. Some of those geckos seem to be outfitted with an active defense system. It's kind of like a land-based version of the Sea Whiz missile interceptor. You see anything that makes those guys look different from other gecko? Parts, perhaps? Destroying those first should neutralize the system. Otherwise, your attacks will keep getting shot down. Snake, there are more differences between the militia and the PMCs than you may think. For one thing, the PMCs are flush with cash, so they usually have the latest gear. Uh, looks that way. Weapon systems, combat suits, tactical vests, communications equipment. All the latest toys. On top of that, they're running on the SOP system, which keeps them in constant contact with each other during battle. The militia, on the other hand, are little more than amateurs. Most haven't even had basic combat training. And their equipment is nothing to brag about either. They're just barely scraping by. Their weapons don't seem to be controlled by the system. The ones I've picked up work for me just fine. Right. But the PMC's weapons won't. You can steal their guns, but they'll most likely be locked and unusable. Remember that. Snake, I've said it a hundred times already, and I'll say it again. Do not let the enemy see you. If the enemy catches sight of you, they'll dispatch reinforcements to your location. You're on your own out there. No backup. There's no place to run and no place to hide. That's why... You worry too much, Otacon. Believe me, I know what'll happen if I screw up. Okay, then. Just be extra careful and stay out of sight. I've got some intel on the PMCs deployed in that area. They're a part of Praying Mantis Corporation, based out of the United Kingdom. It's one of the five largest PMCs in the world. Its business activity includes soldiers for hire, supply and logistics services, education and training for state armies, everything you'd expect. During the Iraq War, Praying Mantis contracted with the U.S. government to send large numbers of its soldiers into combat zones, which is why the local regime opted to hire Praying Mantis, a U.K.-based company, and not their regular army to fight the rebels for them. They were buying their experience. Otacon, seriously, what's with all these ads? Oh, you mean battlefield ads. Battlefield ads? Is that what they're called? On the street, anyway. It's what people are calling any ad having to do with the war economy. 
Privatizing the military has inevitably created intense competition for market share among PMCs and defense industries. Everybody wants to expand their market, get a bigger piece of the pie, so they're churning out truckloads of ads, exactly like the ones we see every day. But war is not something you can just write off. It may seem that way, but the war economy is an enormous driving force in the world today. There are people whose livelihoods depend on those ads. Same goes for internet ads, TV commercials. The world's gone mad, and us with it. I know, but that's reality. Octocamo is a newly developed camouflage technology that's capable of almost exactly mimicking the appearance of objects and surfaces. It's easy to use, too. All you have to do is press up against a wall or object, or lie flat on the ground while wearing the suit. It can be a powerful tool if you use it right. So tell me, how does it feel? <sighs> Not as itchy as I'd have thought. That suit can mimic the color, pattern, and even the surface texture of walls and floors. Kind of like procuring your own camo on site, right? I do just fine with the regular stuff. I'm not a chameleon. You've got it all wrong. We're not talking about lizards. This is octocamo. In other words, it's based on the camouflage capabilities of the octopus. Octopus are sometimes called ninja of the sea. They fool their enemies by mimicking not just the color of their surroundings, but also the shape of the terrain. That suit takes its cue from defensive deception found in nature. Besides, you may not have known this, but there is a snake that can change its body color too. It's called the Kapuas mud snake. It's a poisonous reptile indigenous to the Kapuas River on the island of Borneo. Its coloring is normally a reddish brown, but sometimes turns to white. So, snakes can sport disguises too. Hey, what happened to stealth camo? You used to wear it all the time. All that does is create an optical illusion. It's no use against gecko with their infrared sensors. Octocamo, on the other hand, has micro-peltier arrays that regulate the absorption and release of heat, harmonizing the wearer's body heat with any background IR radiation. Which means it can offer you at least some camouflage protection against enemy infrared sensors. With so many unmanned weapons in the field these days, I'd expect it to outperform the old stealth camo. But if you start walking or running or making a lot of noise, you'll risk getting spotted by the enemy. And get this, the suit also reduces the weight load on your body and amplifies muscle power. The inside lining sends a weak electric current through your body that stimulates phospholipid production inside your cells, improving circulation. That should make your life gauge recover more rapidly when you're hurt. In other words, Snake, it's a bit of a crutch. You can cut the senior citizen crap, Otacon. Rendezvous with the Mark II. I'll show you which route to take. Just do as I say. And don't forget to use Octocamo. The device you're wearing over your left eye is the solid eye. 3D glasses, huh? I remember having a toy pair called Tobit Acid back when I was a kid. Tobit Acid? Um, okay. Never heard of it. The solid eye is a multi-purpose goggle equipped with a variety of functions. It has the same night vision capabilities as ENVGs, as well as a monocular function. It can also display a wide range of data as called for by the situation at hand. It's capable of using visual cues to pull up target data on any soldiers or weapons within its field of vision. Say, for instance, the target is a soldier. The solid eye will display the soldier's physical and emotional state based on body temperature, heart rate, and even sweat secretion. You can toggle the solid eyes functions in the item window. I designed your radar exactly to your specification, Snake. The baseline map shown in the upper right of the screen shows a visual representation of what your senses tell you, including sense you're not even conscious of. It compiles and amplifies data on surrounding temperature, humidity, sounds, and smells. Think of it as a digital expression of the feel of your environment. The feel? You mean my close-range senses? That's one way of putting it, yeah. 
The stronger a feel is, the more vividly it shows up on the radar. But if you're somewhere with a high baseline, in the middle of a combat zone, say, or a panicking crowd, it's tougher to pick up that feel. Granted, you tend to stick out more when it's quiet around you, and it's easier to slip by unnoticed in a commotion, but it also makes you less alert to threats. Living organisms, such as soldiers and moving objects like unmanned weapons, give off strong feels, so they'll show up clearly on your radar. The radar also displays the strength of the ripples you yourself send out to others. The more you stick out, the bigger and brighter your radar presence will be. On the other hand, keeping quiet, staying still, and using octocamo to blend in with the environment makes your radar presence smaller, indicating that you're less likely to be detected by the enemy. Snake, that circle that appears around your body is called a threat ring. It's a visual display of the sense you get from entities all around you. When you're crouching or lying down and concentrating, it forms a perfect circle. Your sense is represented as waves. The stronger the sense, the greater the wave. Hostile entities are displayed as colors. Get acquainted. It'll save your life. Oh, and one more thing. Your senses will suffer when your sight gets low. The ring will reflect that, too. Keep it in mind, okay? I created the Mark II to provide you with mission support. It's outfitted with a full suite of support functions. It can transport weapons and items, assess your condition, conduct recon, provide map data, and analyze the state of battle. You can also use its menu screen to adjust camouflage settings and change equipment. To access the menu screen, press the Start button. I've set the Mark II to shadow you at all times. It'll be there for you to call upon whenever and wherever you need it. Tell me something, Otacon. What possessed you to name it Metal Gear Mark II? I named it that so I'd never forget that I was the one who designed Rex. But the Mark II's no weapon of mass destruction. It's a remote mobile terminal designed solely to support you. I want to show the world that technology can work wonders when it's used the right way. I'll bet that 50 years from now, robot buddies like the Mark II will be a vital part of our society. Even now, 30% of all snipers use robot spotters. I don't think it's quite what Asimov imagined, but we may already be living in the Caves of Steel. Otacon, you gave the Mark II stealth capability? Yeah. The Mark II doesn't have to worry about damage from EM waves because it's a machine, and its surface area is small enough that cost isn't a problem. The trade-off being that it can be easily spotted by heat-seeking unmanned weapons. Keep that in mind, okay? You can pilot the Mark II directly by remote control, too. Open the item window and choose Metal Gear Mark II to switch to manual control. Notice the camouflage option on the Mark II's menu screen. Selecting it lets you manage the octocamo when you need to adjust the settings on your suit, for example. The octocamo has a manual mode where it sticks with one particular pattern, as well as an auto mode where it changes in real time to match the background. Pick whichever one is easiest for you to use. Your mission data can be saved through the codec. When you want to save, open the codec screen and use the save frequency. Snake, you've got to rendezvous with our informants. Listen, the fighting around you is getting more intense. Use radar and the Mark II to make your job easier. Snake, I know the Mark II is just a mobile terminal made to support you and all, but that doesn't mean you can just do whatever you want with it. Do me a favor, will you? The next time you consider sending the Mark II out to get shot to pieces, don't! Ugh, can't believe you're so abusive to Mark II. Otacon? All the time I put into this technology. Ugh. Otacon, are you angry? You just you just like, act like there's nothing but yourself. That's the only thing you think about. Uh, look, I'm sorry. I promise I'll be more careful about how I use the thing. Yeah, well, you better. Let me give you a brief rundown on controlling the Mark II. Use the left stick to move it around. Use the right stick to adjust the camera angle. To execute an electric shock attack with the manipulator, hold down the aim button and press the attack button. 
See a switch? Turn it on and off with the manipulator. Wall in front of you? Knock on it to make some noise. To turn stealth camo on and off, press the stealth button. Press in the R3 button to switch between first person and overhead views. All the controls I've explained to you are available for review in briefing. Check it out if you forget how to do something. During manual control, the Mark II maintains a wireless link with you, but the control signal range is deliberately kept short by an attenuator on the transmitter circuit. The distance varies by environment, so I can't give you an exact figure, but even under the best conditions, it can't exceed 50 meters. 50 meters? That's pretty short. Why impose a limit like that? Seems more useful if I could control it from further away. Of course, I need plenty of signal when I control it. But in your case, you have to be conscious of the danger from DF. You can't risk using a high-power electrical signal for too long. It's like holding up a big sign saying, Hey, I'm over here! So try and keep the Mark II close to you when you use it. Keep that in mind, and the Mark II should serve you well. Snake, this should go without saying, but just so we're clear. You're practically defenseless while controlling the Mark II. So if you're going to use it, you should do it from someplace you're not likely to be found. There are two gauges at the top left of the screen. The one on top is the life gauge. You're probably used to seeing it by now. If the gauge gets low, you can replenish it by eating. Or you can lay low in a safe place and wait for your octocamel suit to restore your life. The gauge underneath your life gauge is the psych gauge. When your psych gauge gets low, your hand will shake more when aiming a gun, your life gauge will recover more slowly, and your radar will become less effective. In short, your overall combat ability will suffer. When your mental condition suffers, your combat abilities do too. To put it another way, when your psych gauge gets low, you'll have trouble performing basic combat actions. The key to getting your psych gauge back up in these situations is stress management. Generally, that means finding some way to give your mind a break from the rigors of combat. You could find a nice, quiet place to rest or eat a meal. Sometimes it even helps to take in a pretty view. And some items may also be used to recover psych. By contrast, hanging around an unfavorable environment, a hot or smelly place, for example, will drain your psych faster. Always pay attention to the environment you're in. Snake, the success of this mission is going to depend on how efficiently you manage your psych. The Mark II's menu contains an option that lets you view a list of factors affecting your psych gauge. So if you're wondering why your psych is dropping, or want to know how to get it back up, check the log. Hey, Snake, was it just me, or did you feel a kind of rush back there? That's what it looked like to me when I was monitoring your suit data. I got spotted by the local grunts, had to take evasive action. I guess you could say I got a little worked up. Yeah, your body was secreting large amounts of adrenaline. Combat high, you mean? These combat highs usually produce a physical response both during and after they end. You should see the effects on your psych and life. Depending on the situation, a combat high might seem like a good thing. But remember... Your body's essentially going into crisis mode. There's no telling what'll happen when you come back down, so try and avoid it whenever possible. The best way to do that is to not alert the enemy. Don't put yourself in a pursuit situation. In short, don't get spotted. So what you're saying is, don't forget the fundamentals. Couldn't have put it better myself. Stay sharp, Snake. Don't forget, Snake. This is a battlefield. Conditions are changing all the time. Sometimes those conditions make it easier for you to lay low. Sometimes they make it harder. Always be on the lookout for the tides to turn. If you see an opening, grab it. For example, if the enemy is locked in battle, they won't be watching their backs. You might try sneaking behind them. Right now, the militia and PMCs are at a stalemate, and just about the whole area is lit up with gunfire. Things are dangerous there even for a guy like you. But if you could somehow tip the balance... <sighs> I might be able to divert the hotspot elsewhere. Bingo! I'll bet you could shape battlefield conditions to make sneaking easier. Maybe by destroying a key weapon that one side relies on. What's up, Snake? Why'd you come back? 
The only way to rendezvous with our informants is to go through the militia's underground facility. Unless you've got something more important to do, follow the mark on your radar to get where you need to. Those guys really know how to put on a show. I'm sure it was old and decrepit already, but I've never seen a building go down like that. The militia fighting against praying mantis are mercenaries belonging to a small-scale local PMC. Most of them are from around here, but it was more than ethnic ties that motivated them to pick up their guns. The country suffers from chronic high unemployment. There are lots of households just barely scraping by. Kids that grow up in that environment don't have the chance to get a decent education. And there aren't enough opportunities for them to go abroad and find work, either. PMCs are one of the few options they have to earn a living. And for that, they go out and risk their necks. It's not a respectable trade by any measure. Still, for some reason, I can't bring myself to condemn them for it. It's complicated, you know? During the Cold War, this region was the site of irregular proxy wars fought between the two superpowers. Now that it's over, the ethnic conflicts that were simmering beneath the surface have erupted into full-scale civil wars. Even today, the political situation is fragile. The land and its people have been ravaged and exhausted by years of constant warfare. With food scarce and the economy near collapse, the country's barely being kept afloat by aid from developed nations. And despite all that, the current regime is still hiring PMCs to put down the anti-government militia, or terrorists as they call them. I know security's a big issue, but come on. If you've got the money to buy bullets, you should be using it to buy your people bread. That's how a lot of people would put it, yes. <sighs> Makes sense to me. Head for the building where our informants are waiting. Your radar will show you which way to go. Snake, you need to rendezvous with our informants. They're U.S. Special Forces. If you need to know which way to go, check your radar. Snake, it looks like that's a base of operations for the militia. I've been reviewing your enemy kill stats. The Mark II's been keeping track. Snake. It says you've taken out some militia along the way. They most likely view you as an extremely dangerous enemy. Don't expect any kind of warm welcome. Remember, you're in hostile territory right now. The Mark II's been keeping track. So far, you've only taken out PMC soldiers. You haven't hurt a single militiaman. To the militia, you're an ally they can trust. Still, you should stay on your guard. Don't call any attention to yourself. The Mark II's been keeping track. It says you haven't taken out a single PMC or militiaman so far. To both sides, you're still a mystery. You've been careful so far. Keep it up. You've probably figured this out by now, but you're in one of the militia's staging bases. I've been reviewing your enemy kill stats. Snake, if you find there's not enough light to see with the naked eye, you can always use the solid eyes night vision mode. Meet our informants at the rendezvous point. The surface route is cut off, so you'll have to pass through the underground facility to get there. The rendezvous point is marked on your radar. Listen, Snake, you've already taken out some militiamen. To them, you're a mortal enemy. Whatever you do, don't let them see you. The rendezvous point is marked on your radar. The militia should treat you as an ally. Try not to do anything to change that. The rendezvous point is marked on your radar. Right now, neither group knows what to make of you. Don't call any attention to yourself, okay? Otacon. Yeah, I heard it too. A special forces unit with advanced gear. Who are they? Some kind of mercenary hired by the PMCs. Anyway, if you do run into those guys, don't get caught off guard. And Snake, remember that guy said one of them has UCAVs under his control. Right. One of his men picked up some pieces. That must be what they had in front of them. Look the same as the one that bombed that building. They may be small, but they bite. Hard. You better be extra careful they don't see you. I see you found yourself an operator uniform. As long as you're wearing it, you can do what you need to do, and the militiamen won't suspect a thing. It'll be a useful tool in certain situations. But be careful. Hurt a fellow militiaman while wearing the uniform, and you'll blow your cover. Got it? Removing the lock on a gun. Otacon, can they really do that? Sorry, don't know the specifics. Give me some time, I'll see what I can dig up. Let me know if you find anything. Will do. Snake, we've got to meet up with our informants. 
The rendezvous point is farther up the street beyond that collapsed building. You'll need to pass through it to get to the other side. Snake, I'm not thrilled with the idea. In fact, I don't like it at all. But business is business. From now on, you'll be using the Mark II to deal with Drebin. Whenever you pick up a weapon that's the same kind as one you already have, any ammo inside will be added to your stock, and the weapon itself will be transferred to Drebin. He'll calculate the weapon's value and deposit the corresponding number of points into your account. Use those points to buy new weapons from him, or to turn ID guns into non-ID guns. I've added a Drebin shop option to the Mark II menu. Check it out. I know what you're thinking, but Drebin does have a point. The world depends on war, on the war economy. Can you imagine what would happen if war just disappeared overnight? Otacon, you and Drebin both mentioned something about a war price earlier. What did you mean by that? It's a kind of market price, one that fluctuates according to demand, not only for PMCs and military industry, but for the production, distribution, and energy supply networks that support them. Hmm. <laughs> It's been growing by leaps and bounds, and investors are really starting to take notice. As the fighting in any given area becomes increasingly intense and prolonged, the war price goes up. No doubt Drebin's rates are linked to that war price. The longer and bloodier a battle becomes, the higher service prices are going to get. To put it another way, the quieter things are, the better the bargains. Snake, we'll use the Mark II to deal with Drebin from here on out. He's what you might call a street vendor— the Mark II can act as a kind of delivery boy, connect you with him. I'm adding a Drebin menu item to the Mark II's weapon menu. Whenever you pick up multiple units of the same weapon, any extras will automatically be sold to Drebin. Any ammo that's inside gets added to your cash. In other words, you keep the ammo, and the weapon itself gets traded to Drebin for points. I see. You can then use the points you've earned to unlock ID guns or buy new weapons. Sounds good. We should assume Dremen has other agents collecting guns for him besides you, Snake. You know, freelance green collars who collect weapons in exchange for services? Guess I'll have to rely on him for now. Okay. Now go meet up with our informants, Rat Patrol. Snake, what are you doing back outside? You need to rendezvous with our informants. Go back into the building where they're hiding. There are PMC snipers deployed in that area. Don't let them get a bead on you, Snake. Snake, is that a drum? And what, pray tell, do you plan to do with it? It's bigger than you are. That's the point, Otacon. It has to be at least this size. How else am I going to fit? Fit? Oh, I got it. If the enemy's after me, I can hide inside until they're gone. And, unlike a cardboard box, in a pinch I can roll into a quick getaway. Say. That does sound pretty good. To hide inside a drum, simply equip it as an item. To roll, press the crawl button to lie down on your side, then move as you normally would. Nice find, Snake. No wonder they call you a professional procurer on sight. Snake, remember how I told you the militia were basically amateurs? Yeah. From what I've seen, though, they're holding their own. Not quite ready to lie down and give up, at least. Right. The militia have hired operators working for them. You're disguised as one now. They make for pretty good commanders in battle. <laughs> well, maybe you haven't noticed because you're not actually working as one, but those operators are all over the place, shouting out orders and giving signals. The militia's ability to organize themselves in battle largely depends on their presence. Heaven forbid one of those operators gets taken out. The chain of command would dissolve, along with any real combat effectiveness. Snake. I've been doing some research. No. Ah, look, those militia are generally made up of volunteers, but they're not just homegrown civvies who've been handed guns and told to fight. It looks like there's a locally based PMC. A small one, but it's there. So the militiamen you're seeing are most likely mercenaries hired by that PMC. Hmm. So you've got PMCs led by PMCs fighting PMCs. A real showcase for the war economy. This is the world we live in, Snake. It's kind of sad, isn't it? Hurry, Snake. The rendezvous with our informants is just up ahead. Check your radar to figure out which way to go. The rendezvous point is just up ahead. The building seems to be abandoned. 
It's not occupied by the PMCs or the militia. The rendezvous point is on the top floor. Check your radar to see which way to go, and use extreme caution. The building is full of traps that serve as alert triggers. Our informants must have set them up to detect intruders. If you see a trap, you can either go around it or send in the Mark II to disarm it. Otacon, what the hell is this sleep gas the Mark II is detecting? The gas it picked up with its chemical sensors is a volatile form of sevoflurane. It's used as a general anesthetic because it acts quickly and causes little irritation. Also, recovery is fast after inhalation ceases, so even if you do breathe it in, you won't be out for very long. That's not very reassuring. I suppose not. The best thing to do is to not trigger it in the first place. Snake, I'm picking up a weak radio signal emitting from the infrared sensors placed throughout the building. My guess is they're set up so that whoever planted them, our informants in other words, can monitor their operating status in real time. I strongly advise leaving those traps alone. The enemy sent in a squad to hunt you down. You've got to get out of there as fast as possible. There won't be any way out of the building until at least the second floor. Work with Merrill's team to find a way down and get to the exit. Snake, one of Akiba's traps is still in the way. It needs to be disarmed before you can get down to the first floor. The trap's set too far into the wall for the Mark II to reach it. You'll have to wait for Akiba to get there and then have him disarm it. Wait for Akiba. You need him to disarm the trap. The exit's on a lower floor. Work with Merrill's team to get rid of anyone in your way. You need to get out of that building now. There's an exit on a lower floor if you can get down there. Fight past the enemy with Merrill's team and get to the bottom. Snake, are you watching Merrill's team? Yeah, they're incredible. The best of the best in special forces are pretty deadly, but Merrill's team is even better than that. They're like a well-oiled machine. Sons of the Patriots. What a system. I'll tell you one thing. I'm glad they're on our side. Then you better not make Merrill mad, for all our sakes. <laughs> no kidding. You gonna be all right? I mean, you two do have a history. <sighs> hey, Snake, that emblem on Merrill's uniform, that's Foxhound, isn't it? Yep. I thought Merrill was with the Zero One unit. I mean... I know she's attached to Foxhound and all, but still. Covert special forces units do this kind of thing all the time. They use emblems that don't mean anything, like skulls and stuff. Like disinformation? Mm -hmm, something like that. I wonder if that's really all it is. Maybe she's still got some lingering attachment. You think so? I meant to Foxhound. I knew that. It's okay if Merrill wants to cling to the past. I just want her to be happy, that's all. Snake, start by going up to the surface. Look for a way out of the basement. Snake, these enhanced soldiers seem to be using some sort of device to cling to the walls. Doesn't look like they have spikes or suction cups. This is only a guess, but I think their gloves and boots might have some mechanism that employs van der Waals force. Uh-huh. It's a type of mutual interaction that occurs between two electrically neutral particles. Geckos use it to crawl up walls and across ceilings. Oh, that kind of gecko. But those things are a hell of a lot lighter than a human. Well, around ten years ago, I read about an experiment where they reportedly suspended an object weighing 100 grams using a 5 millimeter square piece of adhesive tape. Assuming the technology's advanced since then, I don't see why these guys couldn't be climbing all over the walls. Otacon, what about Vamp? How he ran up that support pillar in the big shell. You think that's how he did it? You mean, did he have this technology? He could have, yeah. So it wasn't that he had some freak supernatural powers. Hey, when technology starts to test the limits of our imagination, what's the difference? Liquid is in the PMC camp just up ahead. We need to get to him as fast as we can, but the fighting between the militia and the PMCs is really heating up. You know what to do. Use the battle conditions to your advantage and proceed with caution. Otacon, it looks like the militia have got themselves an armored tank. Yup, a BMP-3. It's an old Soviet-designed IFV. 
It's not quite up to MBT defensive standards, but it's got enough armor to protect it against medium-caliber machine gun rounds. The militia could use it as a barricade against PMC gunfire. Use it to your advantage to help you proceed without having to face the PMCs. Snake, the PMCs appear to be deploying a team of tank busters. They're using FGM 148s. A number of countries have them in their arsenals, including the U.S. It's the latest in man-portable anti-armor weapon systems. They're armed with a tandem warhead capable of destroying ERA-equipped vehicles, as well as an infrared imaging seeker. 100% fire and forget. The U.S. military used a lot of them while in Iraq, to good effect. Snake, this doesn't look good. The militia's BMP-3 doesn't have a prayer against one of those missiles. Nothing to be concerned about if you're not planning on using it, but if you are, you'd better do something now. Those anti-tank missiles the PMCs have with them pack a nasty punch. They can take that BMP-3 down with one hit. If you want to keep using that thing as cover, you'll need to do something about those missiles first. Snake, use that IFV as a shield to help you get to Liquid's PMC camp. Liquid is in the PMC camp up ahead. You're almost there, just a little bit farther. Looks like they just took out a BMP-3. <sighs> it was one of those PMC tank busters. Nice piece of work. I'll say. But now there's one less shield for you to use. Watch out for stray bullets. The enemy's not too discriminating. They're not getting me on a cheap kill. I'll watch my back. Snake, that explosion just now. The PMCs have missiles too? Yeah, well, they've got plenty of everything else. Makes sense that they'd have an anti-armor weapon or two. Could be trouble. If you plan to keep using that BMP-3 as a shield, you better find a way to stop those attacks. They must have a tank buster squad around there somewhere. Find them. Those things just wipe the floor with the militiamen. Must be the special unit that wounded militiaman was talking about. And now the wreckage is blocking the way. Snake, head straight for Liquid's camp. Are those gecko on that truck? I always pictured gecko as these big, hulking things. But I guess they can fold up pretty small, too. Imagine that. I'll bet I could fit one through my front door if I tried. What do you think? Thinking about redecorating? Oh, come on. You don't think I'm that weird, do you? Snake, the Solid Eyes night vision mode can give you a clear view of footprints left behind by the enemy. Use this feature to help you determine their patrol routes more efficiently. Just a little farther to Liquid's camp. Merrill has given us his position. Check your radar to see which way to go. Naomi's lab is north of your present position. The direction of the lab is indicated on your radar. Use it to plan your next move. You're still a long way from Naomi's research lab. The direction of the lab is indicated on your radar. Use it to plan your next move. The low oxygen levels in this high-altitude mountainous area must be having a negative effect on the nanomachines. The PMCs are showing signs of unusually aggressive behavior. Watch your back, Snake. The rebel soldiers are in the plaza now, rounding up the prisoners they took in the last battle. Remember how I was telling you the PMCs are getting more and more prone to violence? Well, there's a fair chance this might not turn out so well for those rebels. Normally, I'd advise you to continue on with your objective, but... I feel for those guys. Look, if you do decide to do the right thing, you'll have to take down those PMCs. It's your call, Snake. Looks like the rebels used that building as an armory. This place is full of stuff I can use. Before you move on, you should stock up on whatever you need. You've still got a long way to go. Looks like the rebels used that building as an armory. I found a lot of useful gear inside. Say, is that a uniform from the previous regime? Yeah, just my size, too. The rebels are a heck of a lot less likely to shoot at you if you're wearing that uniform. Don't hesitate to put it on if you're feeling a little naked. I'll do that. Of course, you have to act the part, too. Don't forget to play nice. Don't worry. I'll behave. Snake, I see you found yourself a uniform from the old regime's army. It's just like the ones the rebels are wearing. Yeah. Snake! What did I tell you about being nice to the rebels? Oh, uh, right. I told you not to mess with them while you're disguised. Now whatever cover that uniform gave you is gone. <sighs> I guess so. But hey, don't worry. I'll make it even if I have to take on both the PMCs and the rebels at once. 
This sneaking suit's never failed me before. That's not the point. When I said be friendly to the rebels, you said don't worry. Now look what you've done. Yeah, but I... Well, just... <sighs> Snake, you've already attacked a rebel soldier while wearing that uniform. Now they know you're a snake in sheep's clothing, so to speak. Wearing that old outfit isn't going to do any good. Oh. You can still wear it if you want. I won't stop you. But I think you'd be better off with Octo Camo. Naomi's lab is to the north. Head north, Snake. Head for Naomi's lab. Follow the mark on your radar, Snake. The facility where Naomi's being forced to do research is still a ways off. Use the destination mark on your radar to figure out where to go. Snake, the gorillas you liberated are probably well-versed in local geography. Following in their footsteps might be the fastest way to get you where you need to go. Something to consider, anyway. Snake, did you manage to get some kind of weapon from the rebels? Yeah. Does it work? Like a charm. You don't say. So I was right. Right about what? Snake, you know the men and women in the rebel army were once regular soldiers in the national army. When the current regime seized power, they were either stripped of their ranks or left of their own accord. At any rate, the vast majority were in the army when the old regime implemented the SOP system. Hold on. You're saying they've got nanomachines in their bodies? Exactly. But when the regime changed, the system expunged their IDs. That's why they can't use ID guns and fight with naked guns instead. On the other hand, it also means the government can't control the rebels' actions through the system. Or you can look at it another way. If you get a weapon from the rebels, there's no need to involve Drebin. You can use it as is. Interesting. Think I'll help myself to some more of those rebel guns. Go easy, Snake. Take only what you need. Of course. You can use it as is. Nice. I'll have to remember that. Where are you headed, Snake? That's not the way to Naomi's lab. Snake, are you going back the way you came? There's a mark on your radar. Follow it to Naomi's lab. Snake, look at those rebel soldiers over there. It looks like they're trying to sneak up on the PMC base, just like you are. You can find your own route if you want to, but it might be easier to just follow them. Or you might try inciting a battle between the PMCs and the rebels and slip past them in the confusion. You should consider fighting alongside the rebels for a little while. It'll help soften up the PMC's defenses, which should work to your advantage when it's time to sneak in. In any event, choose whichever method you think is best given the situation and stick to it. Do you hear the birds, Snake? Yeah. I noticed a change in their song a while back. They're trying to warn other birds about some kind of disturbance. There must be people coming. If they get too close, the birds will stop calling and fly away. Good observation. Birds are nature's greatest security alarms. You should pay attention to how they sing and behave. That's a power station those PMCs are guarding. It's a key piece of infrastructure, so it's bound to be heavily defended. The rebels will surely see it as a high-value target. When those two groups get around to fighting, it's not going to be pretty. You've got a tough choice to make. Follow them or find your own way around. The PMCs have deployed snipers. Yeah, lucky it wasn't me they were aiming for. Snipers favor elevated places that provide a good view. They've got to be attacking from high ground. First identify the sniper's positions, and then think of a way to deal with them. Yeah, lucky it wasn't me they were aiming for. But where the heck are they shooting from? If I were a sniper, I'd pick someplace high up with a bird's eye view. Somewhere I could pin down the enemy, leave him no place to hide. So the snipers are up on high ground somewhere. That's what I'm thinking. Okay, Snake. Your top priority should be taking care of any snipers. Search the heights and anywhere else you can think of until you've identified their positions. Yeah. Lucky it wasn't me they were aiming for. Snake, it's too dangerous to proceed until you know where those snipers are shooting from. Yeah. Better take care of them first. Sure, but we don't know where they're hiding. The first thing you need to do is identify their positions. Search the area until you find those bastards. Until now, the rebels have been engaging the PMCs in an effort to capture the power station without damaging it. But looking at the way they've been fighting lately, I'm seeing a slight change in the rebels' strategy. 
They don't seem as concerned about keeping the facility intact. Well, this was originally their land. Even if the infrastructure takes a few hits, as long as they regain control, they can always rebuild later. Right now, their top priority is thinning the PMC's ranks. At least, that's what it looks like from here. You could be right. They might even be trying to take out the power station now. Take it out? Yeah. Render the switchboard inoperative and you'll shut the whole place down. The PMCs are likely expecting that, and will fight tooth and nail to defend the facility. Watch yourself out there. Will do. Naomi's lab is to the north. Head north, Snake. There's a battle raging in the area surrounding the power station. Be careful. Head for Naomi's lab. Follow the mark on your radar, Snake. There's a battle raging in the area surrounding the power station. Be careful. The facility where Naomi's being forced to do research is still a ways off. Use the destination mark on your radar to figure out where to go. There's a battle raging in the area surrounding the power station. Be careful. You shut down the station, Snake. Nice job. <laughs> Could have done it in my sleep. Now that they've lost one of their bases, the regime troops will be on the defensive. This is your opportunity to slip through. Looks like the rebels succeeded in shutting down the power station. Now that they've lost one of their bases, the regime troops will be on the defensive. This is your opportunity to slip through. Otacon, what is that thing? It looks like a gecko with a man inside. Huh. It must be that performance test model for the new powered battle suit. Test model? There have been rumors for a while that AT Corp's Land Systems Division was developing a powered suit at their own expense. It must be on loan to the PMCs for field testing. That's the first time I've seen one. I don't know the name or model number, and there's not much I can tell you about its performance either. But from what I've seen so far, that thing may be much more than just a man-powered gecko. Their speed isn't particularly impressive, but they're heavily armed. They've got multi-barreled machine guns and missile launchers. And at that size, CQC's not going to do you a whole lot of good. Better not take them lightly. This isn't your garden-variety soldier. But from what I've seen, I'm thinking you're right. They do seem similar to Gecko in certain ways. They're pretty fast, given their size, and they look heavily armed to boot. Hmm. The PMC the regime hired is French, isn't it? It sure is. Puvre armement. Octopus armaments. Why? On this battlefield ad I'm looking at, it's written in French. Les tentacules de la puvre pour votre guerre. It means something like arms of the octopus, arms for your war. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Fluent in six languages. You know, I bet the octopus never saw it coming. Somebody using its limbs to design a wartime advertisement? You use what you can. That's what we humans do. <sighs> Sounds like something a procure on-site expert would say. Is that so, Otacon? I'm kidding, I'm kidding. The battle at the power station seems to have died down a little, but the situation hasn't changed. Whoever wins has got the area in lockdown, so Snake, proceed with caution, and don't let anybody see you. There doesn't seem to be any fighting going on there, but the enemy's out on patrol. Make sure they don't spot you. The PMCs seem to have shifted all their forces to the defense outpost. Hmm, looks that way. There's not a single PMC in sight. All I see are advancing rebels. Good. Keep on going. We need to hurry. Snake, have you noticed the birds? If they change their songs or fly away, it means there's something or someone there. Keep your eyes and ears open. Snake, you're now moving through a marsh. The swampy ground makes for poor footing, but all those tall rushes will help keep you hidden. Looks to have lots of other places you can hide, too. Snake, what is that? A drainage ditch or something? Judging by its position, it may be a sewage outlet for the confinement facility to the north. I can't imagine there'd be enemies patrolling that ditch. It might actually be your safest route, even if it is slow going. Why not try following it for a while? Snake, here's how to swim when you're in deep enough water. First, press the X button to go underwater. Then press the X button repeatedly to swim forward. Use the left or right stick to change direction. And remember, you can use some of your weapons underwater just like you can on dry land. 
Got all that? Snake, let's go over swimming. First, press the X button to submerge yourself. While underwater, use the left stick to move. To change directions, use the left or right stick. To surface, just swim upward. To surface, swim upward or press the X button one more time. Whenever you find yourself in a spot or situation where you can't breathe, you'll see an O2 gauge at the top of the screen. That gauge slowly decreases over time. When it reaches zero, your life gauge will start to drop. Keep an eye on your O2 gauge and try to get back to where you can breathe as soon as possible. If there's an edge, like in a pool, press the triangle button to get out of the water. And remember, you can use some of your weapons underwater just like you can on dry land. Got all that? Snake, that looks like a PMC-run prison camp. It's safe to assume that it's under extremely tight security. Obviously, the rebels didn't succeed in storming the place. The battle's getting pretty heated. Perfect. Now's my chance to slip inside without being noticed. That's true. But keep in mind, bypassing the prison and forging on ahead is always an option. It's up to you, Snake. Got it. It's safe to assume that it's under extremely tight security. But the rebels have already managed to storm the place. It's safe to assume that it's under extremely tight security. Any sign of prisoners? Yeah, I saw some guys who fit the bill. I found a weapons storeroom, too. A storeroom? Yep, already helped myself to the best stuff. Snake, I understand procurement on site and all, but this is your best chance to slip through all the commotion unseen. I wouldn't get too greedy if I were you. But I have to do what's best given the circumstances. I'm not arguing. The decision's yours. Just be careful, that's all. I saw some guys who fit the bill. Otacon, with security like this, you'd think there'd be an arms locker or something, wouldn't you? Don't tell me you're looking for weapons. Look, if I was in your shoes, I'd be using this opportunity to get the heck out of there. Any sign of prisoners? Not yet, no. But they've got to be around here somewhere. You're inside a confinement facility. Looks like the rebel prisoners have all escaped. You don't want to hang around here too long. Wrap it up as soon as you can and hurry on ahead. You're inside a confinement facility. I see you've also helped yourself to some gear. What's that you're on? A guard tower? Yeah. Nice clear view of the whole compound. Perfect for watching what the enemy's up to. Or taking them out from a distance. But if you've got a good view of them, then they've probably got a good view of you, too. As soon as you've got the info you need, I'd advise you to get down from there. Are you still up there, Snake? Yeah, I'm coming. Just give me a minute. Okay, hurry it up. Snake, you're now passing through a salt pan. Groundwater saturated in halite springs to the surface, then basks in the sunlight to produce salt. Deep red earth encrusted with sparkling white salt. It's quite a sight. As you can see, though, the view is a little too good. One false move and you'll be spotted. You better be extra careful as you move through there. You're now at a supply depot. It's a pretty run-down old building, but part of it houses rebel prisoners, so don't expect security to be light. You're in a supply depot, and it looks like most of the rebel prisoners here have already escaped. So you're pretty much done there, aren't you, Snake? We've got to hurry to Naomi's lab. Wrap it up and let's get going. The battle is still raging. You can take advantage of the confusion or try and go around it. Either way, Naomi's lab is just up ahead. Stay on your toes. Snake, it's just a little farther to the lab. Don't get sloppy now and get yourself caught. An armored dozer. These days, they're an essential tool for any army engaging in urban warfare. When the enemies hold up in a building you're trying to take, a normal armored vehicle's not going to be able to punch a hole. Using a tank cannon can lead to overkill. But the armored dozer is designed as a construction vehicle, very effective in destroying parts of enemy buildings and busting down barricades to open the way for assault teams. I remember a scene like that in some movie based on the U.S. invasion of Panama. Still, there are people out there who aren't too happy about this kind of civilian equipment being used for military purposes. They've started a protest movement. Protest movement? Cute. Not that it matters to me anymore. 
It looks like the rebels are going to use that dozer to break down the front door of that mansion. And the PMCs are putting up a hell of a fight, though. They've got the rebels at a standstill. You should help the rebels mount their assault. It's the quickest way to get into the mansion grounds. Then I'll have to do something about those powered suits. You got it. Show them who's boss, Snake. Help the rebels break through the PMC defenses. Those powered suits are what's holding them back. Either keep those suits busy or get rid of them. It's an armored bulldozer. They're gonna use it to break down the gate. Snake, that's your ticket inside. Wait for them to bring it down and then charge on in. Snake, you've got to get that gate open somehow. <sighs> Any ideas? Oh. Wait, I've got it. What if you took out all the PMCs outside the gate? Think they'd open up the gate to send out reinforcements? Hmm. Could work. Okay, let's give it a shot. Careful they don't take you out first, though. Snake, why'd you attack the bulldozer? That thing was your ticket inside. Ah, never mind. It's too late now. It looks like the rebels have all pulled out for the time being. You should, too, and find a safe place to lay low. Or... You could take out all the PMCs outside the gate. They'd have to send out reinforcements. I get it. That could get the gate open for a minute. Snake, either find a safe place to lay low for a while or take out all the PMCs guarding the gate. The choice is yours, but be careful. Snake, take down the PMCs outside the gate. It's the only way. It's the quickest way to get into the mansion grounds. Some of the PMCs are armed with anti-tank missiles. Better do something about that. You know what to do, Snake. The lab where they're making Naomi do her research is somewhere inside. First things first, find a way to get inside that mansion. The rebels have pushed their way inside. This is the PMC's last stronghold. They'll stop at nothing to defend it. This battle's only gonna get bloodier from here. The bloodier the better. For me, at least. That's only if you make use of the situation. Be ready for anything. See that big mansion in front of you, Snake? The lab where they're making Naomi do her research is somewhere inside. First things first, find a way to get inside that mansion. It's an awfully big building. Expect to meet some serious security inside. Don't think you can just waltz right in. There should be a passageway leading to Naomi's lab. Look around for it, Snake. Naomi should be somewhere inside the mansion grounds. Use your radar to guide you to her location. Snake, in order to get to Naomi's lab, you need to get to the other side of that sealed door. That's where the skylight should come in handy. Get up there! To reach Naomi's lab, you need to go through the skylight and get to the other side of that sealed door. The video Naomi sent us contained data pinpointing the location of her lab. Naomi's waiting. Find her! Snake, you're right next to where Naomi is. But according to the data she provided, your elevation is just a little bit off. She must be up above you. Is there a ladder or something? If there is, use it to get up there. Your elevation is just a little bit off. She's just above you. Use that ladder to climb up to her lab. They're taking Naomi again. Don't let them stand in your way. Take them out and go after her. Enemies within close range may try to kill you using wires. Snake, if the enemy gets too close and starts strangling you with a wire again, hurry and do what you did before. Jerk the left stick around to shake them off. Naomi's lab is divided into multiple rooms and corridors. Make use of the lab's layout to give yourself cover. The enemy seems to be using disturbance tactics. They're trying to throw you off guard, create opportunities to strike. Watch for signs of attack and be on the lookout for incoming enemies. Your octo camo can help hide you from enemy eyes. Use it to blend in with the background when the enemies lost sight of you. It'll give you a critical edge in battle. Snake, Octopus's suit seems to work the same way as your octo camo. It'll use mimicry and traps as weapons against you. Stay focused. Don't be deceived by its disguises. Snake, the radar reacts when the enemy's presence is strong. Keep an eye on the radar at all times. Got that? Those spherical weapons Octopus is throwing. Floating bombs, I guess you'd call them. They seem to be custom made. I've never seen anything like them. No kidding. They get a beat on me and hone right in. Hard to shake them off. I think they're a type of MAV. 
micro-air vehicles, sort of like a distant cousin of the remote control missile. How do I stop them? From what I've seen, there's a time lag between when they latch onto the target and detonation. You can use that lag to your advantage. Shake them off before they detonate. They don't seem too sticky, so rolling on the ground ought to do the trick. Or you could shoot them out of the air before they hit you. You can do it. Listen, Snake, if one of Octopus's floating bombs sticks to you, roll around on the ground to shake it off. Otacon, what the hell were you thinking sending me over there? Hold on a minute. I didn't tell you to go anywhere. Thanks a lot. I just got nailed by a trap. Are you trying to get me killed? Now, now, wait a second, Snake. Something's fishy here. Someone keeps calling you, but it's not me. Octopus. Think about what she can do. It's a fake. It sure is possible. Watch out, Snake. Snake, you've got to be more careful. Those are traps laid by Octopus. Use your head, man. Otacon, what's wrong? Why are you calling me over there? Huh? What are you talking about? I didn't say anything. It was you. I'm telling you, I didn't call you. This is no time for jokes. You're supposed to be fighting Octopus. Come on. Uh, uh. Hey, Otacon. Make use of mimicry to fool Octopus, just like she's doing to you. Use Octocamo to lay an ambush. Technically, your gear's about on par with the enemy's, so it won't be the deciding factor in this battle. Be aware of changes in your surroundings. Octopus may try and mimic things you'd never expect. Be particularly mindful of things you don't remember having seen before. Otacon, doesn't that enhancement suit remind you of anything? You mean those arm-like extensions? I think we've both got a pretty good idea. An offshoot of the battlesuit Solidus War. You think the BMBs are connected to him somehow? I doubt it. But I'll tell you one thing. They're in an entirely different league than the other PMCs. Even at medium range, those arms could deliver a nasty blow. Watch out for them, and keep your distance. Will do. Snake, if she gets her arms wrapped around you, jerk the left stick around to shake them off. Zapping it with a Mark II might also do the trick. Do whatever you can to get out of her grip. From the looks of it, she's unarmed. And yet, she's coming closer. I don't know what she's up to, but watch out, Snake. When she hugs you, you take damage. Don't get too close, Snake. Stay away from her. Snake, don't let her get too close. Keep your distance. Snake, you're going the wrong way. Follow the mark on your radar. It'll lead you to Naomi. Naomi's left a clear trail for you to follow. Use Raiden's advice to help figure out where she was taken. The enemy's probably setting up ambushes ahead. Keep an eye on your radar for signs of enemy presence. The enemy must have known you were tailing them and manipulated their tracks. They're trying to lure you into a trap. You're going to have to look at more than just footprints. There's got to be some other clue. Another way to figure out which way Naomi went. The enemy is planting tracks to try and confuse you, Snake. Watch the footprints closely. Look for any changes, no matter how small. And choose your route carefully. An explosive trap. If you'd triggered it, not only would you have sustained damage, the sound would have put the enemy on alert. Watch your step. Snake, are you okay? Yeah, I got careless, that's all. Unfortunately, that explosion tipped off the enemy to the fact that someone's after them. You'll need to be even more careful from now on. Snake, I saw you got caught in a trap back there. You okay? <clears throat> yeah, I guess. Damn it. Should have watched my step. Got careless, that's all. And this after you warned me to watch out for traps. Snake, you'll want to pay attention to birds and animals, too. If you see a bird suddenly take off, or an animal scurrying away, it's a sign that something's amiss. Don't panic if you lose track of Naomi's footprints. Remember what Raiden told you. When a man walks through the woods, he leaves all kinds of traces behind him without even knowing it. Keep your eyes peeled for those traces, and you're sure to find them. When a person makes a depression in the ground with their foot, there's a temperature difference between that print and the surrounding earth. With your solid eyes night vision mode, you can detect that slight difference and see the footprint. Snake, you remember what Raiden was saying about scouting? Well, I did a little research of my own. 
The scouting he was talking about has a slightly different nuance than the reconnaissance scouting commonly referred to in the military. Makes sense. I kind of got that feeling from the way he was talking. The word scout, as he used it, originally referred to Native American warriors. I, on the other hand, prefer to see the concept as being rooted in their attitudes towards nature. To know nature, study it, fear it, love it, to be one with it. As I understand it, the true essence of scouting lies in that way of life. The basis of scouting is awareness. Take, for example, a hunter tracking an animal. The hunter is surrounded by clues that tell him about his prey. Footprints, bent grass, broken branches, shifts in the air, things that are out of place. But they only speak to the tracker if he notices them. Some Native American tribes have long been able to detect even the most minute details because they develop those senses from early childhood by living in nature. They use all five of their senses, placing great importance on sensing through the skin, and sometimes go shirtless even in winter. It's said there are many different ways to feel the same wind. These things may seem foreign to you and I, but for them, it's a way of life. Hmm. A little too abstract for me. Yeah, me too. Maybe Ryden's reached a level of enlightenment we haven't. Maybe. Something to ask him next time our paths cross. Snake, the Mark II's microphone is picking something up. It sounds like a helicopter rotor. Maybe there's a heliport nearby. I'm pretty sure you've reached the forest's edge, Snake. The exit to the heliport should be close by. Find it. That's weird. Your signal just cut off for a minute there. Maybe the responder's out of whack or something. Aha! Look where you're standing, Snake. Doesn't that look like a crop circle to you? Hmm. Looks more like someone went a little nuts with the weed whacker. They say crop circles are the work of sentient, intelligent, extraterrestrial life. So, back then, maybe it was a UFO that came and abducted you. Uh, what? Snake, do you feel any different? Mm, not that I can tell. Some things in this universe are simply beyond the reach of human understanding. What the hell are you talking about? It does make sense. We are in South America, after all. Lots of UFO sightings probably happens all the time. As long as you're safe. Let's get back to tracking Naomi. Uh, yeah, okay. Snake, we've got to go after Naomi. Use the mark on your radar to tell you which way to go. Snake, we have to rescue Naomi. The mark on the radar shows the general direction they took her in. Follow her. Snake, you've got to get to the plaza beyond the market. I'll be waiting there with the chopper. All you have to do is get there in one piece. Snake, the chopper is almost ready for takeoff. We're waiting for you in the plaza beyond the market. Make sure Naomi gets here safely. Snake, you're almost there. Raiden's keeping the enemy at bay. Now's your chance to make a run for it. Cross the market to the chopper. Snake, hurry and get across the market. The chopper's waiting. Run! Snake. Those syringes Naomi gave you seem to completely refill your sight gauge. Yeah, and it stops dropping after I use them. True, but that effect will only be temporary. So don't get too dependent on them, okay? Snake, it looks like the hypo's effect is starting to wear off faster. You think maybe they're losing their effectiveness? Next time you use one, it could have some sort of adverse impact on your body. Be careful. Snake, are you okay? Your psych gauge just plummeted. Could it have been the hypo? Otacon, you were right. My psych goes up for a while and then comes crashing down. Is it because I'm using these needles too often? I'm afraid so. You're probably rebounding. <sighs> Never been on a diet before. Not that kind, Snake. Your prolonged use of the hypos is causing your body to develop a tolerance. You can feel the effects getting weaker, right? And when they wear off, you experience violent withdrawal symptoms. Your psych plunges and you vomit like you did just now. This is bad. It's symptomatic of chemical dependence. But it's not life-threatening in and of itself. Right now, it's more important I've got a way to recover from critical condition. The composition of that drug is a mystery. You may be okay now, but there's no guarantee you'll stay that way. 
If you're gonna keep using it, at least try to show some restraint. All right, all right. I'll make sure not to dig too many holes. Promise me, Snake. It's as I feared, Snake. Your overuse of hypos is starting to produce some serious side effects. The hypos only work for a little while, and then my psych and life gauges just crash. It's tearing me off. I think what you're experiencing is similar to withdrawal symptoms. Snake, you've got to stop using those hypos. I understand your concern, but when my life's on the line, I don't have a choice. My only concern is staying in fighting condition, and if I need these things to do that, I'm gonna use them. Snake! Snake, the rebounds are getting worse. They're starting to suck away your life as well as your psyche. You've got to stop using those hypos. I'll be fine. I'm still breathing, right? Enough already, Snake. I can see it eating away at your body. If this keeps me together until I get my hands on liquid, that's good enough for me. You can't- It's my life. I'll do what I want with it. Snake! I know what you're thinking. And you can relax. I'm not going to my grave just yet. You mean that? Of course. Why else do you think I'd run this tired old ragdoll through the ringer? Listen to me. Your body can't take this much punishment. Push yourself too hard, and you won't even live to meet Liquid. Fine. Okay. Promise me. Okay, okay, I promise. And hey. Yeah? I'm sorry to make you worry. You want to cheer me up? Just come back in one piece. I mean it. You got it, pal. To identify where the resistance is likely to be found, check your radar for signs of their presence, or use the radio in your item window to intercept PMC communications. To find the resistance, check your radar for signs of their presence. You could also try intercepting communications from Ravensword, the local PMC, to identify a place where they're likely to be found. Intercept their communications? How do I do that? Oh, yeah. I've been meaning to tell you. I provided you with a new device for just that purpose. The PMCs have laid a dragnet for resistance members that covers the entire town. They're using SOP to notify each other by radio of any info collected during their searches. By intercepting those signals, you should be able to reach the resistance members' locations in real time. Why didn't you tell me this in the first place? Sorry. I couldn't track the precision until I'd field tested it. But everything checks out. It should work just fine. That's wonderful. So, how do I use it? To hijack PMC communications, open the item window and select the Signal Interceptor. The interceptor constantly monitors PMC voice and data transmissions. It sifts through that massive data stream for words related to the Paradise Lost Army, the local resistance movement. Then it collects and analyzes the associated digital data. Any available intel on the current location of resistance members is forwarded to your map. Hmm, like NSA's echelon system. Yeah, only warmer and fuzzier. When you've got the signal interceptor equipped and you hear the PMC's chatter about the resistance, check your map. It should display the location. By the way, it was Campbell who gave us the data that allows us to analyze the signals. That code only corresponds to Ravensword's unique ID, so it won't work with other PMCs in other areas. Keep that in mind. Not a problem. This'll do just fine. Intercept their communications. Hold on. I did see something in the items that I'd never seen before. Is that what I'm supposed to use? That's the one. To find the resistance, check your radar for signs of their presence. You could also try intercepting communications from Ravensword, the local PMC, to identify a place where they're likely to be found. Snake, the Resistance doesn't know anything about you. With the city under curfew, well, if they see an unfamiliar face tailing them, they'll assume you're with the government and attack, or else just run away. Whatever you do, make sure they don't notice you. The thing the Resistance fears the most is the government learning the location of their hideout. Which means that if the PMC's alert level is any higher than normal, the Resistance won't head home under any circumstances. It's too risky, and that hideout is too valuable. Keep that in mind. Snake, that area is under surveillance by PMC security patrols. 
You don't need me to tell you to watch out for them. If they see you, you'll be too busy engaging them to tail the resistance. If you see your resistance target getting arrested, don't give up. They'll be taken to a PMC guardhouse for interrogation. While they're being taken there, help resistance members get away by taking out their PMC escorts. Don't worry if you lose sight of your resistance target or if they get arrested and you can't save them. You'll have other opportunities. This city is Big Mama's home base. There's got to be more than one or two of her men hanging around. Just keep your eyes peeled. They're bound to be others. Get your act together, Snake. You're supposed to be tailing them, not harassing them. Knock it off, Snake. You've got to keep a low profile. What if they spot you? Okay, seriously, Snake. Let's think this through. Snake! Fine. Do whatever you want. Just don't forget what we're here for. Snake! What are you doing? We need them to lead us to Big Mama's hideout. Don't harm the Resistance. Snake, do not kill the Resistance. They're our only means of finding Big Mama's hideout. Knock it off, Snake. Are you trying to abort this mission? Snake! If the PMCs find anybody other than one of their own, they'll dispense with the niceties and take them straight in for interrogation. So if your resistance target gets, or is about to get, arrested, take out their PMC captor. But try to do it in a way that doesn't make it obvious they've been attacked. You might want to try putting them to sleep. Snake, I need you ready to respond if the resistance gets in trouble, okay? When your resistance target looks like they're about to be detected, try using yourself as bait to distract the PMCs, giving him a chance to slip away. Knock on a wall or throw an empty magazine. Always be ready to take the appropriate action if the need arises. Otacon, it's like a PMC convention here. It all started six months ago. An American company was planning an oil pipeline, and the current pro-U.S. government approved PMC units to be stationed in the country to provide security during construction. This brought tensions between the government and the anti-U.S. opposition to a boiling point. And then, a riot, presumably instigated by the opposition, broke out near the U.S. Embassy. The PMCs suppressed the riot, placing the government directly in Washington's front pocket. Almost overnight, they opened up this country to a large-scale hunt down of the resistance. And now, the entire transportation network has been shut down, with checkpoints everywhere. That's the official story, anyway. Hmm. The riot that the opposition supposedly started? I suspect it was all part of a conspiracy. The units executing the actual operation are part of Liquid's own PMC. And the resistance group they're trying to flush out is led by Big Mama. The resistance also happens to have Big Boss's body in its possession. Seems as though Liquid was the one pulling the strings. He must have incited the riot to frame Big Mama, creating a scenario that allowed him to bring in the big guns to recover that body. I doubt politics has anything to do with any of this. Sounds like Liquid, all right. It does. Now, Snake, you know the drill. We need to get to Big Mama before they do. My sentiments, exactly. The Resistance most likely employs a variety of methods to ensure their tracks are covered. Pay close attention to what they're doing at all times. Let yourself get distracted and they'll be out of sight before you know it. You've got to tail the Resistance without letting them know you're there. The same goes for the PMCs, of course. Stay focused on your target. Don't lose sight of him. Lose his trail and you'll have to search for another Resistance member. Forget about it, Snake. As long as there's danger about, the Resistance won't head towards their hideout. You'll have to wait until the PMCs lift their state of alert. Guess we'll have to find another Resistance member to follow. Check your radar for signs of their presence. Or you can listen in on PMC radio communications. They might tip you off to the location of a Resistance member. Snake, that Resistance member is about to be spotted by the PMCs. Quick, stop them! That resistance member's been arrested. Take out the PMC escorts and help him get away. We've already lost too many resistance members to the PMCs. If any more of them get snatched, we'll be in a world of hurt. I know, I know. I'll do what I can before they reach the checkpoint. The resistance member you were tailing was taken away by the PMCs. You'll have to go out and find another one, Snake. 
Use your radar to check for signs of resistance presence or intercept PMC radio signals to get info on likely resistance locations. Another resistance member got taken away. You'd better go find another one quick. There can't be that many of them left out there. Unless this next one leads us to their hideout, we're screwed. Liquid will stop at nothing to get Big Boss's body. Work with the resistance fighters. Make sure that van gets out of there in one piece. The enemy is after Big Boss's body. They'll probably hold back from attacking the van to avoid damaging the body, but they'll throw everything they've got against you and the other escorts. It's game time, Snake. You've got to hold them off. The safety of that van depends on how well you fight to protect it. There'll be enemies waiting in ambush, too. You'll need to go ahead, wipe them out, and clear a path. Damn it! We lost the van! Yeah, and to top it off, there's some monster crows flying around here. Looks like the tourists have been feeding these guys. They're pretty damn big. We'll just have to head to the rendezvous point and pray that the van is safe. Snake, don't let your guard down! Take those guys out and open up the road. Hang in there, Snake. You're almost to the rendezvous point. Shake those guys off your tail. Snake, your opponent is a flying beast. It'll attack you with a swarm of slider u at its command. Like Big Mama was saying, the beast's movements seem to follow a pattern. Look for an opening in that pattern and exploit it. Snake, it seems as though the angrier Raven becomes, the shorter her veneer bursts get. I'm seeing a correlation between the emotion data I'm getting through the solid eye and the length of time she uses the veneer. And? Well, after the veneer fires for a certain period of time, it has to be shut down for a while so it can cool off. Like firing a machine gun and burst to avoid burning out the barrel. Good analogy. Now, this is only a guess, but I'm thinking that Raven tends to lose control of herself when angered. Normally, she'd try to avoid overheating the vernier, but get her riled up and she seems to forget all about that. I get it. The vernier keeps getting hotter and hotter. Necessitating longer and more frequent cool-down periods. So, the greater her rage, the less she can fly. Exactly. Keep up your attack, but try to provoke her into getting mad. That should give you a fighting chance. Snake, those sliders are equipped with searchlights. Don't get caught in the beam, or they'll spot you right away. I've been analyzing Raven's emotional data. She seems to get even more enraged when she's attacked or loses a slider. That fury gradually cools down over time. So, keep a steady stream of attacks to sustain that rage, or shoot down a lot of her sliders. Either way should do the trick. You'll sustain serious damage if you get hit by her cluster bombs. When you hear the warning signal, move to a different floor or get out of the tower. Don't get hit. Those sliders will sometimes leave her side and operate independently, most likely acting as a remote scouting platform. If you see a slider flying on its own, don't hesitate to shoot it down. That should reduce the beast's situation awareness and tilt the odds in your favor. The beast's attacks are taking a heavy toll on the surrounding structures. As more of them are reduced to rubble, you'll have fewer places to hide. Time is not on your side, Snake. You need to finish this thing, fast. I'll bet she's like the other one. Should be going up in flames any second. If that happens, you'll get hurt if she grabs onto you. Watch your distance. As I thought, she's just like Octopus. Keep your distance, don't let her grab you. Keep your distance, Snake. Don't let her get too close. Dr. Madnar offered Sonny and Naomi his full support. He's going to lend them a dialysis machine. No charge. Hmm. Good to hear. I hear you saved the doctor and his little girl back at Outer Heaven. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Always good to help others. That reminds me. Madnar wanted me to tell you. His daughter Ellen is married now. Kids, too. Three of them. Uh, one more thing. He said to tell you he's... sorry. Yeah. Follow that underground waterway to the rendezvous point by the river. If you follow the flow of the water, it should come out right near the rendezvous point. I'm picking up multiple gecko in the area, but it's still better than the reception they've got waiting for you up top. Just remember, Big Mama's in bad shape. Be ready for anything, and keep her safe. Got that? Snake, we've got a problem. 
I detected some unusual enemy movements, so I ran some scans. It turns out Big Mama's emitting a beacon signal from her body. In other words, they've got a bead on our position. I wasn't detecting any signal before you left the hideout, which means it must have somehow been planted before you got to the waterway. The sniper. Sniper? Yeah, it must have been the bullet. It seemed more like she got hit by an ultra-low velocity slug than a high velocity FMJ round. You can tell? I've got a sense for these things. The slug that buried itself in Big Mama must have been carrying a capsule containing signal-emitting nanomachines. So what now? How do we get the nanomachines to stop broadcasting our location? Try those nanomachine-suppressing hypos Naomi gave you. She said they can help reduce nanomachine activity in the body. They ought to work on the nanos inside Big Mama, too. It's worth a try. Hurry! That was it, Snake! The instant you gave Big Mama that shot, the signal faded away. By now, it's completely shut down. The drug inside Naomi's hypos is suppressing the nanomachines inside the body. Now all you have to do is take care of the rest of the dwarf gecko. Get through there as fast as you can and get to Big Boss's body. The drug inside Naomi's hypos is suppressing the nanomachines inside the body. That ought to throw the enemy off the trail for now. Be careful, though. Don't let them get another trace on you. Otacon, this place is crawling with rats. What, you were expecting a more vermin-free underground waterway? Something's weird about the way they're moving. Like they're avoiding something or trying to get away. Hmm. First the birds helped me out in South America. Now it's the rats' turn. If you get out of this alive, you should consider a donation to the ASPCA. Hmm. I'll think about it. Snake, pay attention to the rats' movements. They'll help you figure out where the gecko are. Snake, what are you killing rats for? Torturing small animals is a sign of a warped mind, you know? Leave them alone and get back to helping Big Mama, all right? There's water flowing just below that opening. You're in good shape, so it wouldn't be a big deal for you to fall in. But Big Mama, on the other hand, there's a guardrail to keep that from happening. But if she gets knocked back by enemy attacks, there's no guarantee it'll hold her. Take good care of Big Mama and make sure she doesn't fall in, okay? Snake, you've got to protect Big Mama from enemy attacks. We can't afford to lose her. The enemy's targeting Big Mama. She's in grave danger. It's your job to protect her. Got that? What the hell are you thinking? Attacking Big Mama like that? Whatever happened to respecting your elders? Oh, for God's sake. Snake, what's gotten into you? Don't you harm another hair on her head. Not one. Got it? Snake, why you... Oh! Snake, you've got to restore Big Mama's life. Select whatever food you've got in the item window, equip it, stand in front of her, and then press the action button. That'll get her life back up. Big Mama looks like she's in bad shape. She needs help fast. That'll get her life back up. Time to take responsibility for what you've done. Right, Snake? To restore Big Mama's life, equip some food, stand in front of her, and press the action button. Hurry and get her life back up. It looks like that watertight door leads to another part of this underground waterway. Yeah, how about that? You'll need to vary your route now and then to avoid being spotted. Those doors should come in handy. To open a watertight door, stand in front of it and press the action button. The handle came off. Huh. It looks like they didn't do a very good job of maintaining these things. I did some sniffing around with the Mark II, and there seems to be a route that'll take you around to the other side of the door. You might just be able to open the door from the other side. It's worth a shot, anyway. There's no handle on the door? Well, that place isn't exactly well-maintained, is it? Snake. By opening that gate and letting the water out, you should reduce the risk of being seen by the gecko on the other side. Do you see a handle anywhere that might do that? If you find it, try giving it a spin. This isn't good, Snake. They've deployed Gecko armed with chemical weapons. Get out of there, pronto! You're not carrying a gas mask with you. One lungful of that gas and you're a goner. If there's a chance you could be hit with a gas attack, clear the area immediately. Got that? Snake, 
Use the syringe you got from Naomi. Inject Big Mama with a nanomachine suppressant. To give someone a shot, equip the syringe and capture the target using CQC. Then, when the signal appears, just press the action button. You've got to inject Big Mama with the nanomachine suppressant. Head for the rendezvous point. Stay out of the enemy's sight. When you've made sure the coast is clear, let Big Mama know it's okay to move on. Press the action button to give her the signal. The rendezvous point is downstream. Follow the water's flow. Snake, you can't lead Big Mama to safety when the enemy's after you like this. Get their alert level down a notch first. You're currently located east of the heliport. To get to the base facility from here, there are two routes. One leads northwest and the other southwest. It's up to you which one to follow. And Snake, not only are there plenty of gecko out on patrol, but visibility is extremely limited in this weather. Steer clear of whiteouts. Big Boss's body has fallen into Liquid's clutches. We can't let him get his hands on Rex, too. We have to get to the underground escape route where Rex is stored before they do. I'm setting your radar to point towards the target. Check it if you need to get your bearings. Shadow Moses is an uninhabited ruin now. There aren't any human soldiers stationed here, but I am picking up unmanned machines. Judging by their signature, they're probably a part of Liquid's army. I know you're getting pretty used to fighting them by now, but don't let your guard down. Snake, that route will take you to the heliport. It's a bit more of a hike than heading northwest, but the terrain provides more cover from enemies. No freezing ponds to fall into, either. Keep heading west, and you'll get to the heliport. And Snake, not only are there plenty of gecko out on patrol, but visibility is extremely limited in this weather. Steer clear of whiteouts. Snake, there's next to zero visibility there. You may experience complete whiteouts. You might even end up bumping heads with a gecko. Proceed with extreme caution. Use the terrain to your advantage. Stay out of enemy sights. The heliport is to the west. You know what to do. Snake, that route will take you straight to the canyon. It's quite a bit shorter distance-wise than heading southwest. But as you can see, there's nothing blocking you from the enemy's view. Be on the lookout for patrolling soldiers. And Snake, not only are there plenty of gecko out on patrol, but visibility is extremely limited in this weather. Steer clear of whiteouts. What's the matter? There's no point in coming back this way, is there? Move on. We need to keep moving forward. Look at your radar if you need to know which way to go. Snake, there's nothing for you back here. Keep heading north. Snake, you didn't just... You did, didn't you? You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Your sight gauge is down. Maybe it's the cold water you're in? You better find a way to get your sight back up. The tank hanger. Oh, I guess you can't see it in the blizzard, huh? Well, it's right in front of you. It sure brings back memories, doesn't it? I know it's all ancient history by now, but do you remember how you snuck into the hangar last time? I seem to remember the front hangar door being shut back then because of a blizzard just like this one. Yeah, there's two ducts that lead inside, an upper and a lower one. I picked one and used it to sneak in. So, are you going to use the duct this time, too? If that's the only way in, yeah. Look, there's the tank hangar. It sure brings back memories, doesn't it? I know it's all ancient history by now, but do you remember how you snuck into the hangar last time? I seem to remember the front hangar door being shut back then because of a blizzard just like this one. Yeah, there's two ducts that lead inside, an upper and a lower one. I picked one and used it to sneak in. Well, now you've got three ways to get in. Lucky you. Keep going north and enter the tank hangar. I'll let you decide the best COA. The camera's dead. Of course. It wouldn't still work after all this time, would it? <laughs> but boy, what a shock. Uh, I knew it was dead all along. Oh, really? You looked awfully serious to me when you first saw that camera. You must have panicked just a little. Not a bit. Not at all? Are you sure? Barely registered. You're imagining things. Am I? Yeah, you are. Well, this is how you sounded. A surveillance camera? Come on, you were scared out of your wits. <sighs> <sighs> Am I right? No. 
Well, well, aren't we getting cranky in our old age? I'm not deaf. Oh. <laughs> okay, all right. That gecko looks as if its drive has gone completely dead. I wonder if it's some mechanical problem. Uh, never mind that, Snake. No time for dead lizards. Keep moving. Whoa, what the hell was that? That gecko must have been in hibernation mode or something. One minute it looks dead and then BAM! <laughs> Tell me about it. I think I almost had a heart attack. Seriously, though, who'd have thought Gecko had that kind of operational mode? Whoever made him must have been a real bastard. From now on, you'd better keep both eyes on those Gecko. You don't want to get fooled like that again. No disagreement here. It looks like they haven't deployed any security at the heliport. But that doesn't mean there won't be any later on. Stay alert. We've got another weird one here, Otacon. Ah, the little three-legged, uh, three-armed machine. Actually, I was in touch with Nastasha just recently. She told me about a rumor making its way around the military analyst community. Nastasha Romanenko. And? Gecko are being deployed in more and more urban counterterrorism operations. In the process, they've encountered a number of problems. One of them is size and weight. Compared to other types of armored weapons, Gecko are relatively small and light, but they're still a bit too big to be effective in indoor search and combat operations. So the manufacturer, AT Corp, developed a new, smaller UGV based on the Gecko archetype for just that kind of mission. And the latest word is, they're about to start field testing. And that's what these things are? More than likely. That's all the information I have. The very existence of these things is still top secret. Pint-sized gecko, huh? Dwarf gecko. I doubt they're heavily armed. But remember, these things are designed to support gecko during indoor combat. Best to assume they're capable of some form of attack. Hmm, maybe so. But they're still just machines. True, but that doesn't mean you can take them lightly. Be careful, Snake. Snake, chaff grenades work the same as they always have. They prevent electronic devices from functioning. Their primary use is to temporarily neutralize the homing capabilities of enemy weapons. I'm sure that'll come in handy. Security here is comprised of unmanned machines. In nasty weather like this, they could pose a bigger threat than standard soldiers. Be careful, Snake. Taking the duct, eh? Still remember where the exit is? Yeah, I'll be fine. The way I remember it, these ducks aren't that complicated. And I had some friends to show me the way. Friends? Friends. Little furry ones. L little furry? <laughs> Never mind. The way I remember it, these ducks aren't that complicated. And my old friends are still here to show me the way. I won't get lost. Snake, hurry through that duct and get inside the hangar. Snake, I know it's easy to get nostalgic about this place, but we really need to get to Rex. Head north. Oh, those tanks they stored here last time sure have aged. But some things stay the same. They should still make for good cover. Snake, there may be gecko and dwarf gecko deployed in that area. Watch your back. Make your way through the hangar and out the back door. It'll take you to the canyon to the north. Snake, there are Gecko and Dwarf Gecko patrolling that area as well. Stay out of their sight and make your way through the hangar towards the canyon to the north. Now try not to let your footsteps get too loud up there. The Gecko are equipped with sound and vibration sensors. You don't want to be making any kind of racket. Stalk or crawl to move without making any noise. Snake, what are you doing in there? Just reminiscing. Last time I was here, there was this nice stash of weapons and items. Who knows? Maybe you'll find something in there again. Maybe. Okay, just remember, we need to get a move on. Right. I'll be done here in a sec. Thought I might get lucky again, and sure enough, I was right. You mean you found something? Yep. Okay, just remember, we need to get a move on. Right. I'll be done here in a sec. Snake, it's good to see you're getting back to the basics of on-site procurement, but we've got a job to do. We have to get to Rex. Wrap it up and head for the underground escape route. To get to the canyon to the north, go through the back door of the hangar. Remember the mission, Snake. 
This snow just won't quit, will it? Can't see a thing in this whiteout. Visibility is practically zero. You need to be especially vigilant for enemy patrols. Make good use of your octo camo to help you get through. No sign of the enemy yet, but we'd better assume they're out there on patrol. Use the shielding effect of the terrain to stay hidden. Hey, Snake, isn't this where you went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Raven and his tank? Tell me again, how did you take that thing down, anyway? How? Uh, well, grenades. That's it? You didn't use an anti-tank missile or something? Didn't have one. Your technique is kind of... Well, how do I put this? Archaic when it comes to fighting tanks. Honestly, I don't think it'd work on today's main battle tanks. Well, that's how I did it. What do you want me to say? You know, I asked an active duty army officer once, if an infantryman had to take on a tank one-on-one, -on -one, how should he do it? And what was his answer? Don't. He swore there's no way in hell a single infantryman could take down a tank by himself. Huh. Interesting. I always suspected there was a little something crazy about you, Snake. But hearing that story, now I know it. You're nuts! Single-handedly taking out a tank? That's crazy! You're insane! Otacon, is this your idea of a compliment? Yes! You're the toughest, craziest, most hardcore badass on the planet! You're... the shit! Huh? Hey, Snake. Something I've been meaning to ask you. That canyon, isn't that where you demolished Raven's tank? How'd you do it, anyway? The nuclear storage facility is just up ahead. But you're not even halfway to the underground supply tunnel yet. You need to get a move on. I don't see any enemies around here. Okay, we'll go through the door all the way at the back. Otacon, last time around, we had a few complications and wound up going through the commander's office in the basement. That's right. I remember now. But there's no need to go all the way down there this time, right? The back door takes us straight where we need to go. Mm -hmm. Good point. Okay, then. Let's get to the back door. Otacon, the elevator's not working. Hmm. The panel lights are dead, too. Looks like the power's out. Still, there's no need to take the elevator, is there? Hurry up and head to the gate at the north end of the building. Wrong floor, Snake. You're one level too high. Go downstairs, then head all the way to the back. You're still on the wrong floor. Go downstairs. We're not gonna get anywhere at this pace, old timer. I believe the warheads have been removed from those nuclear missiles. The amount of ionizing radiation the Mark III's Geiger counter is detecting is significantly lower than what we'd see if there were actual warheads present. Which means, obviously, that you can use heavy weapons without having to worry about igniting leaking radioactive material and causing a nuclear holocaust. Nice. Keep heading north, all the way to the back. Then, head through the door. The north door is locked. It won't budge. We need to access the system through the LAN in my old lab to unlock it. My lab is on floor B2 of that building. Take the elevator to floor B2. My lab is on floor B2. You should use the elevator. You can access the elevator from the catwalk above you. Use the stairs to get up there. You can get to the elevator from the catwalk you're on now. To activate it, stand in front of the control panel and press the action button. Snake, head for the first floor. Use the elevator to get up there. Snake, hurry to the first floor. Use the elevator to get up there. Snake? I know it's an abandoned facility and all, but what exactly are you doing in there? I was just, uh, reminiscing. In the ladies' room. Okay. It's not what you think. Oh, no need to explain. It's none of my business what you do in your spare time. Uh, but try to behave yourself in front of Sonny. Don't get any funny ideas. You're in a ladies' room, for Pete's sake. Why would any guy be in there reminiscing unless he was some kind of... Uh, look, this is where Meryl and I first really talked. Meryl? Yeah. She was young back then. Couldn't yet cut it as a soldier. Didn't have the confidence to fight. A lot has happened in nine years. This place reminded me of all that. 
Snake. I, uh... Sorry. Sidetracked. I'm on my way to your lab now. Okay. Let's go. Snake, this is neither the time or place to stand around reminiscing. I'm sorry to sound like a nag, but we really need to get going. My lab is on floor B2. Take the elevator to floor B2 right away. Get in the elevator and take it down. My old lab is on floor B2. What's wrong, Snake? The door that leads to the cave. I can't get through it. Door? All I see is a bookcase. Behind the bookcase. There's a door hidden back there. Oh, the one you were talking about upstairs. It leads to the cave where the wolf dogs lived. Now that you mention it, I think I do remember now. When I fought Psycho Mantis here, just before he died, he used his psychokinetic powers to move the bookcase. But now it's back in place, blocking the door. I'll bet they put it back so the dogs wouldn't get into the facility. Could be. Last time I went this way and through the comm towers. Well, I suppose you could just slide the bookcase yourself and go that way. But those two towers got smashed up pretty bad during your battle with the Hind D. Not to mention the severe beating those towers have been taking from the cold Arctic weather. I highly doubt anything is functional up there. You're probably right. No sense living in the past. Falling back on old tricks. Time for a new approach. Exactly. But the objective hasn't changed. Head to my lab and unlock the door. Right. I'm on it, Otacon. There's a door hidden back there. Really? Well, who would have figured? Snake! Dwarf Gecko! Stay out of their sight! It's best to put them out of commission if you can. Snake, that's floor B1. My lab is on floor B2. Take the elevator to floor B2 right away. Snake, that's floor B1. Get in the elevator and take it down. My old lab is on floor B2. <laughs> this brings back memories. My colleagues and I used to work in these cubicles. We were all brilliant engineers. The best of the best. And we were close, too. Like family. We used to play pranks on each other all the time. Like, on this one girl's birthday, we stuffed her cubicle completely full of balloons. <laughs> or this other guy who got married... When he came back from his honeymoon, he found his workstation had been hollowed out and its guts replaced with jelly beans. <laughs> uh, sounds like a blast. It was. But all that time, my colleagues and I, we were building wrecks. Here we are, messing around in our cubicles all day like giddy grad students, and what do we end up with? A weapon of mass destruction. It's not exactly the sort of thing you can look back on and laugh, is it? You obsess over the past too much. It's a bad habit. Come on, I need directions here. That's your job, right? To support me. Yeah, you're right. You can count on me. We're partners, after all. Good to have you with me, partner. It's good to be here, Snake. Everything looks exactly like I remember it. Except for that wall way in back, anyway. I still can't believe how much damage you caused in such a small space. Ah, the switchboard. Nailed it with a remote control missile to shut down the electric current in the floor. The guidance system in those things takes up so much space, it hardly leaves any room for explosives. Didn't make much of a bang, huh? Hardly. Switchboard's still intact. You're right. The wiring past the switch circuits could still be live. Wait a minute. I'm not going to get shocked if I walk on this floor, am I? No need to worry. As long as you don't turn the current back on. I remember this place. After you beat the cyborg ninja, I came out into the hallway and all I saw was a sea of blood. The air was filled with a sickly sweet smell. I remember thinking, this must be what hell is like. My mind couldn't even process what I was seeing at first. <sighs> Anyway, keep following that hallway to the north and you'll reach my lab. Keep following that hallway to the north and you'll reach my lab. Just a little farther to my lab. Go to the south end of the central hallway, turn east, and head straight towards it. The door on the first floor is unlocked now. You can go through any time. You don't have any weapons you can use against the gecko? Nope. All out. All I've got on me are small arms. Snake, how can you be so relaxed at a time like this? 
No use getting upset, Otacon. That's just all I've got. Ah, sometimes you really amaze me. Look, you're gonna have to find some other way to beat those things or else you're stuck. There must be another way. Think, Snake, think. Do you have a weapon that would work against those gecko? Sure do. Okay, great. Use it to get them out of the way. About those gecko. Yeah? They've been augmented with some kind of applique armor. <sighs> so much for the weak spot on their necks, then. I'm afraid so. You'll just have to face them head on. Try anti-tank weapons. <sighs> Got it. I'm afraid so. You'll just have to find another way to beat them. See anything around there that would do the trick? Snake, remember how I said a little while ago that those electrical wires might still be live? Yeah. Wait, if the wires are live... Maybe you can use the Mark III to turn the current in the floor on again. The Gecko probably have decent surge protection on their electronic components, but a good long high-voltage bath just might fry their organic parts. Go ahead and send the Mark III over to the switchboard. It's worth a shot. Remember when we first met? I hate to bring up painful memories, but remember how you got shocked in this hallway before you first came to my office? Yeah. Blew me halfway across the room. Come to think of it, why have a high-voltage current running through the floor in a research facility? Isn't that... dangerous? Well, it wasn't there at first, obviously. They installed it when Liquid took the place over. To keep you from escaping. So you'd have to finish Rex. Exactly. Say, didn't you destroy the switchboard to the current? With a remote control missile, yeah. Well, I just checked it out over the LAN, and it looks like those circuits are still getting power. What? That would mean... Maybe you can use the Mark III to turn the current in the floor on again. The Gecko probably have decent surge protection on their electronic components, but a good long high-voltage bath just might fry their organic parts. Go ahead and send the Mark III over to the switchboard. It's worth a shot. To turn on the current in the floor, get the Mark III to the switchboard. Then press the action button. That ought to do the trick. Let's give this a shot. To get up to the first floor, you'll have to do something about those gecko. Get rid of them, Snake! Let's see if we can get the current flowing through the floor again. Send the Mark III over to the switchboard. Okay, Snake, the path is clear. Head for the first floor. Use the elevator to get up there. Snake, hurry to the first floor. The door's already unlocked. Use the elevator to get up there. Snake, those geckos seem to be equipped with CW units. They fire some kind of poison gas. I'm guessing carbonyl dichloride. Inhalation will lead to coughing, shortness of breath, and respiratory distress, with a high rate of fatality. But if you had a gas mask... Don't have one on me this time. Well, if you can't guard against that gas, the only other option is to make sure it doesn't get released. The gecko are probably programmed to launch a chemical attack upon detecting vital signs from a living target, especially when it's human. I'll bet it's part of their mission protocol. Be careful not to let them know you're there, Snake. Use the Mark III, Snake. Poison gas has no effect on it, so the gecko won't bother. But don't expect them to just ignore it, either. I'm counting on you to keep it in one piece. Snake, be careful not to trigger the gecko's poison gas attack. It's too dangerous for you to go in yourself. Use the Mark III instead. Don't forget, though, it's still vulnerable to conventional attacks. Snake, the door is on the level below you. Take the stairs down and head for the door on the north side. Keep heading north until you reach the door all the way in back. I'll override the Mark III's controls and open the door for you. The Mark III has to stay near the door until I've opened it, and it can't use stealth camo. It's only a matter of time before the gecko find it. No stealth. So what? I thought it didn't work on the gecko anyway. It's true, stealth doesn't do much against the gecko's sensor suit, but it's better than nothing. Compared to full visibility, the probability of detection is slightly lower. So, if it's even a little bit better being invisible than not, why turn off the stealth? Why? Because I have to use the Mark III's manipulator to open the door, that's why. I don't get it. 
Once the Mark III activates its stealth camo, the entire machine becomes transparent, including the manipulator. Yeah, so? <sighs> How easy do you think it would be for you to eat a meal, clean your gun, if you couldn't see your own hands? Ah, uh, I got it. Look, Snake, it doesn't take a genius to figure out the Mark III's not going to survive a run-in with those gecko. Don't let them get close to it until I've opened the door. Okay, no problem. I'm on it. The Mark III is starting to unlock the door. This shouldn't take too long. Hang tight. We'll have it open in no time. Just be patient. Snake, I pulled the image data from your solid eye and analyzed it. That gecko appears to be equipped with one of those self-destruct units. It'll explode upon seeing you and take you with it. In fact, attack it the wrong way and you risk setting off the explosive charge it carries. Whatever you do, keep its attention focused someplace else. Don't let yourself or the Mark III fall into its sight. That gecko seems to be equipped with one of those CW units. Listen, you've got no way to protect yourself against a poison gas attack. Don't let it see you under any circumstance. That also goes for the Mark III. Keep its attention focused elsewhere. Buy the Mark III enough time to get that door open. You've got no way to protect yourself against a poison gas attack. Either stay out of its sight or use whatever you've got to destroy it. At this point, I don't care. Just buy the Mark III enough time to get the door open. To kill Gecko, you first need to destroy their active defense system. As long as it's operational, any RPGs you fire at them will just get shot down. Destroy the active defense system before you aim for the body itself. Look at the Gecko. See the Millowave radar antenna up top? And the intercepting shot launcher on the upper part of its leg? That's the active defense system. Aim for those parts and destroy them. Knock out the sensor and you should be able to disable it. Aim for the antenna. Buy us some time so the Mark III can open the door. Distract the gecko and keep them far away from the Mark III. Do something about those gecko! They're gonna destroy the Mark III! Please, Snake, get those gecko away from the Mark III! Where'd the gecko go? Looks like you squeezed by again. Jeez, you almost gave me a coronary. The comm towers. This is where you fought Liquid's hind D. Hmm. That was a tough scrape. But you still managed to shoot down his gunship. Up till then, I'd heard that even with a man pads, going one-on-one -on -one against an attack chopper was an act of suicide. I thought only Hollywood action stars did that kind of thing. But you made it look easy. I just told you, it wasn't that easy. Really? But you were all like, oh, I had to take out that helicopter. Real cool. Like, like it was nothing. All right, enough chit-chat. Let's get going. We got a long way to go to Rex's hangar. Yeah, you're right, Snake. That reminds me, Snake. When you fought Liquid's hind D on the comm tower, there was a nasty blizzard back then, too. I know this place. It's the underground passage from outside the commander's office to the comm tower. What's left of it, anyway? It's completely buried in the snow now. Good thing you couldn't get out through the commander's office. Even if you did, with all this snow, you'd have had to turn back anyway. We were in such a hurry to get out, we almost took a wrong turn. Yeah, no kidding. Lucky for us. A little luck goes a long way. Naomi's headed for Rex's hangar. We have to get there quick. Head north. Don't bother going into the comm towers. Go around them. This beast has four legs, and it's accompanied by an escort unit wearing powered suits. Watch out for their attack, Snake. Otacon, she seems to know exactly where I am, even in this damn whiteout. What the hell is going on? Infrared, maybe? No, you're wearing octocamo. It wouldn't be able to read you. Snake, do you see a pattern in her attacks? Anything that gives you a hint? Right. Now that I think about it, her attacks have been coming from downwind. Which means... Damn, she can smell me. Amazing. Tracking you in this wind, just by your scent? A St. Bernard can find and rescue a lost hiker in the middle of a blizzard in the Alps. If that beast has an olfactory sensor as keen as a dog's, it's not out of the question. Then what do we do? Octocamo doesn't do anything to mask your scent. All I can do is try and guess where that thing's going to be. Try to move downwind. Can you do it? Either I do, or I don't. 
Okay, then. Good luck, Snake. Snake, I've temporarily reconfigured your baseline map's functions. It's now more sensitive to smell. You should get a better idea of how scents are carrying on the wind from the radar. Pay close attention to how those smells carry. Damn it, Otacon. It's mowing those trees down in one shot. What the hell is that beast using? All that power, but still small enough for the beast to carry. And that noise it makes when it charges. Snake, do you remember the weapon Fortune had? A railgun. We come here to keep them from stealing a railgun, and here they are using one against us. I don't want to be conspiratorial, but it seems like something's behind this. Maybe it's just fate. Never mind. You've got to tame that beast. You're right, Otacon. Let's do this. Snake, the B&Bs are encased in nearly impenetrable suit systems. That goes for Wolf, too. Pump as many bullets as you want into the outer shell, but it's not going to do a hell of a lot of good. Got an alternative? Assuming she's using the same type of railgun Fortune did, she'll have to hold it with both hands to fire. You're saying she has to expose herself when she attacks? That's my guess. Aim for that opening and you should do some serious damage. Wait until she's getting ready to fire that railgun and then counterattack. You'll only have a second, but it's your only chance. Focus all your reflexes on that moment. Wolf's outer shell is almost totally impervious. You'll be hard-pressed to punch through that armor with what you've got. So what then? The suit itself is tough to damage, but what about the flesh and blood human inside? If you give the suit a hard enough shock, I bet the beauty inside will suffer serious damage. Attack it with an explosive weapon, or one with enough power to knock it off its feet. The suit should fall over. You need to knock the beast to the ground. How? Uh, let me think. The snow here's pretty thick. It doesn't make for good traction. And you'd probably lose a lot of stability if you charged at full speed. That's the time to attack, when it's relatively easy for her to lose her balance. Wait for Wolf to charge you, and then hit her hard. The most effective time to knock Wolf down is when she's lost her sense of stability. The snow's pretty deep here. On a surface like this, it'd be easy to lose balance doing a full-speed charge. I bet even a normal weapon would be enough to knock her down. When Wolf charges at you, try holding tight until the last second before attacking her. When the railgun begins charging, the enhanced soldiers in its line of fire all simultaneously lower their posture. Yeah, it's either a maneuver designed to minimize friendly fire, or to draw my attention away from Wolf. To protect her. Whatever the case, they do seem to be highly coordinated. <laughs> Thanks to the SOP system, no doubt. Don't underestimate them, Snake. Snake! Enemy reinforcements! We need to finish this quickly before more backup arrives. Can't argue with that. The escort unit has stopped attacking. It looks like you wiped them out. But that beast is still deadly. Don't let your guard down. Snake, the enemy is coordinating their attacks against you. Don't get too focused on one, or the others will sneak up behind you. Keep your eyes peeled. It's just you and the beast now. But like the other members of the B&B &B Corps, this one probably hits pretty hard. It's showtime, Snake. The beast can tell where you are from your scent. Watch the way the wind blows and get downwind of her. Snake, she's just like the others. Don't let her get close. Don't let her get too close. She'll cling to you and you'll take damage. Don't let that happen. Watch out, Snake. Don't let her get close to you. Snake, we're only halfway there. Let's get going. The warehouse at the north end of the snowfield leads to the blast furnace. Head north. Hear that, Snake? Yeah. The wolf dogs. Her family. It must be tough for them in this environment with all the people gone. Wolf dogs aren't like other dogs. They're closer to wolves in nature. Happier living in the wild than being kept as pets. Even more so now that they're guarding the grave of a loved one. You sure about that? Trust me. I used to live with dogs just like these. I know what I'm talking about. Okay, if you say so. The warehouse at the north end of the snowfield leads to the blast furnace. Head north. The stairs in back lead to the blast furnace. Head that way. The blast furnace is just below. 
keep going down. This blast furnace is an empty pit now. Not that I'm surprised. It looks like all the molten ore from the furnace flowed away. I can see the hole in the bottom where they extracted the pig iron. Arkan, how do I get this door open? It's not opening? That's weird. I know I disengaged security back at the lab. Looks like we'll have to find some other way. I've got it. If memory serves, there are casting and rolling facilities directly beneath the furnace. You should be able to pass through them to a drainage duct that leads to Rex's hangar. How do I get there? Uh, let's see. I think there was a hole in the floor of the blast furnace. Blast furnace floor. Got it. How do I get there? There should be a special service elevator in the northwest corner of this floor. Northwest corner. Got it. Snake, what's the big idea killing defenseless animals? How do you think the world would feel if they knew their hero liked taking pot shots at birds? The cargo elevator down to Rex's hangar is ahead. It's that big door in the back, on the right. Head through that door and keep going. Snake, go down to the casting and rolling facilities below. You can get there through a hole in the floor of the blast furnace. Snake, go down to the casting and rolling facilities below. Use the elevator in the northwest corner. To get down to the rolling facilities, use the elevator in the northwest corner. The casting facility is divided vertically into several levels. I seem to remember there being a passage to the rolling facility on the bottom floor. Start out by going down to the lowest level. Careful, Snake. This place is crawling with gecko and dwarf gecko. It must have been Vamp who sealed the blast furnace door. How do you figure? No one ever comes down here, and yet there's gecko everywhere. He must have figured if I couldn't get the door open, I'd come down here. That freak set up a kill zone just for me. Figures. Snake, don't let him get to you. You've got to get through there alive. Snake, you need to get to the lowest level, then pass through the rolling facility. From there, you can access the drainage duct leading to Rex's hangar. The rolling facility is to the north. Pass through it and you'll find a drainage duct leading to Rex's hangar. Head north. The rolling facility is a long, narrow space that stretches south to north. The southern half houses the rollers, while the northern half is used to cool the finished steel sheets. The drainage duct lies beyond that. Head for that drainage duct. Keep moving north through the rolling facility. The door to the drainage duct leading to Rex's hangar is at the north end. Keep going straight down that waterway. You'll end up in front of the hangar. After that, it's just a hop, skip, and a jump to Rex. Snake, you see that ladder? Use it to climb up to the passageway above. Rex is just up ahead, Snake. But you know that by now, don't you? This is it. Be careful in there. The hangar's just up ahead. Keep heading north. Snake, I went ahead and remotely sent the lift used to bring Rex up to the supply tunnel. So then, all aboard. Snake, Take the lift to get up to the supply tunnel. You'll need to use the ladder. Then I'll use the Mark III to operate the lift. Make him pay, Snake! Do it for me! For Emma! Do whatever it takes! Just make sure he stays down this time! Get Naomi back for me! Please! What does it take to kill this guy? I've done enough damage to finish him and he's just bouncing back. That's it! Remember what Naomi said after Raiden fought him in South America? The nanomachines in his body are helping him heal at an accelerated rate. Damn. So conventional attacks won't do any good. I don't know. But for now, just give him everything you've got. Vamp's nanomachines instantaneously close up any wounds he receives. It's not that conventional attacks don't work. The nanomachines undo the damage before you can finish him off. There must be some special attack method that could work. Think, Snake, think. There must be something. Damn it. It looks like conventional attacks won't be enough after all. If only we had a bomb. Turn him into a cloud of pink smoke. Snake, there's only one option left. Find some way to stop his nanomachines from working. It could be the silver bullet we're looking for. But how? Think, Snake. There must be a way. I've got it. Naomi's syringe. Those drugs suppress nanomachine activity. <sighs> the syringe. It ought to work on the nanomachines in Vamp's body, too. Stop his life from recovering so fast. 
Use Naomi's syringe to pump him full of the drugs. Snake, use the syringe Naomi gave you. Inject Vamp with the nanomachine suppressing drugs. Snake, you've got to buy some time until my check of Rex is complete. These Gecko are rigged to blow themselves up. You need to destroy the frame completely with a powerful weapon before they finish their self-destruct sequence. Snake, that railgun Wolf was using. Yeah, it's serviceable. Good. That should give you more than enough power. Use it to shoot the Gecko. You've got to hold those Gecko at bay until I finish checking on Rex. The Gecko are rigged to blow themselves up. You need to destroy them before they finish their self-destruct sequence. Time to show off your sharpshooting skills. Stop those Gecko! Don't let them self-destruct! If one of them looks like it's about to self-destruct, shoot it immediately! You can do this, Snake! Get to the port area at the end of the supply tunnel as fast as you can. Go, Snake! Go! We've got a problem. A swarm of Gecko are starting to converge in Rex's hangar. Liquid intends to wipe out this whole facility. If that many of them self-destruct at once, there's no way you'll get clear. You have to escape to the surface before they detonate. Just in case you forget anything, you can review the controls for Rex in Briefing in the Mark III menu. I hate to say it, but I think Liquid's got the advantage when it comes to piloting Metal Gear. After all, he's had Ray in his hands for quite some time now. But not to worry. I was Rex's lead designer, and I'm here to support you. I've installed an emulator of Rex's main CPU and DSP on Gaudi. We'll run it in parallel with Rex's processors to enable distributed processing of control tasks. It'll give us a big boost in throughput, which should make Rex as fast and agile as Ray. <sighs> well, I have no idea what that means, but it sounds good to me. It's okay, Snake. I know you can win this. <sighs> Thanks, Otacon. Do me a favor, Snake. Get as close to Ray as you can. Get closer? What the hell for? I created a special control program back when I was designing Rex. I thought it might come in handy here. What kind of program? Rex is armed with powerful self-defense systems. Missiles, laser, designed to protect it during solo ops overseas. But some of us engineers were worried about what would happen if it found itself in a close-range shootout. We got to thinking. Why not use Rex's tough shell as a weapon in itself? In other words, why not make it into a street fighter? The program was completed, and we got fantastic results on a supercomputer simulation. But the project was shelved before we could make our pitch. Didn't fit in with military regulations. But... But... I, uh, went ahead and installed the program anyway. You know, secretly. Seriously? I just rechecked the program on Gaudi's simulator, and as far as I can tell, it should still work fine. Okay, just tell me how to use it. The program is still in alpha, so it's low on flexibility, and only gives results in specific cases. I'll give you a signal when the conditions are right to activate it. When you see the signal, just press the action button and Ray won't even know what hit it. But first, you have to get close to Ray. Let's do it. All right. That's what I like to hear. Come on, Snake. You can't let Liquid beat you. Snake, the catapult malfunctioned when it launched Merrill. She landed some distance away from you. <sighs> and Akiba ended up in the drink. There's no time to rendezvous with them. You'll each have to make your own way to the server room. I'll be following you with a Mark III. I can't be there to watch your back in person, but I'm with you all the way. Good luck, Snake. <sighs> How's it going over there, Otacon? The troops above decks are having a shootout with the enemy over on your end. It's a total war zone. <sighs> you could be okay. For now, at least. The Missouri's protected by some pretty thick armor. <laughs> Good. Sounds like everything's under control. But don't count on it lasting. If things get bad, abandon ship. Got it? Yeah, I know. Same goes for you too, Snake. Don't end up like Admiral Nelson. Don't worry. I'm not ready to hang it up yet. Not until I finish the mission. That's the spirit, Snake. According to Naomi, the only way to board Haven is through that watertight door. It looks like the type of watertight door that's unsealed by rotating the handle. Open it and get in. 
Snake, you won't be able to open the door if the enemy's alerted to your presence. You won't be able to open the door unless you get rid of the enemy. Approach the door undetected. Liquid has dispatched armor-enhanced troops from his personal army to that area. You do not want to get surrounded by them. Make sure they don't see you, or if you do engage, try and take them out one at a time. Snake, the enemies brought in powered suits to hunt you down. Unlike the enhanced troops, you can't sneak up behind these guys and neutralize them with CQC. You'll need to be more clever than that. Think before you act. Snake, it looks as though the enemies also brought in powered suits to hunt you down. Unlike the enhanced troops, you can't sneak up behind these guys and neutralize them with CQC. You'll need to be more clever than that. Think before you act. Gecko, they must have been sent in as backup. The entrance to Haven's interior is just up ahead. Stay out of sight and make your way to the entrance. Snake, proceed towards the ship's stern. We're going to infiltrate the interior of Haven. The entrance to the interior of Haven is towards the stern of the ship. Head toward the stern. The server room is still a ways off. Keep moving. And be sure to keep an eye on your radar so you know which way to go. You've got to protect Meryl. Don't let the enemy get to her. Snake, what are you thinking? Are you trying to kill her or what? Stop it, Snake. Meryl can't take this kind of abuse. Keep her safe. Don't hurt her. Enough is enough, Snake. How can you call yourself a man hurting a woman like that? Oh! The only way forward is to get rid of them. Snake, you know what to do. Snake, this beast, Screaming Mantis, is a puppeteer. She manipulates others into doing the fighting for her. <sighs> Control seems to kick in when you get hit by that creepy ghost thing. <sighs> Be careful you don't get jerked around too, okay? Otacon, what's going on? I can't move. You can't move? What the heck did you... Oh, Snake, did you set the controller number to something other than one? <clears throat> Let me guess. You thought back to your battle with Psycho Mantis and figured the same tactic would actually work again, right? Well, I... I... <sighs> nice try, Snake. But this time the controller number has to be one, or else you can't control your actions. What the hell? Whose dumb idea was that? Don't look at me! I'm sorry, but it's simply not going to work this time around. Fine. Snake. Remember how Psychomantis controlled Meryl using telepathy? Well, I'm thinking this thing does it by manipulating the nanomachines inside a target's body, forcing them to secrete opioids and sending them into hypoesthesia. In other words, she puts them into a sleepwalking state and controls their muscle systems directly. <sighs> what is that ghost-looking thing, anyway? My guess? A hologram, meant to intimidate people. Having some freaky thing like that suddenly pop up in front of you is enough to make anybody jump. Hmm. Like how special forces dress all in black when they go on a raid. The control signals for the nanomachines must be embedded in the laser used to create the hologram. That's probably why Mantis can't control you unless you touch it. Hmm. But she's controlling dead guys, too. What about that? Same concept. Didn't you ever do that experiment in high school where you attach electrodes to a dead frog's leg to make it twitch? The nanomachines are capable of storing an electric charge. It's entirely possible that Mantis is using that electricity to make muscles contract. If she really is controlling people through their nanomachines, you know a way to counter that, right? Give it a try. No! Snake! Mantis got Meryl! She's going to blow her brains out unless you do something! You've got to free her from the beast's control. Snake, Meryl is under that monster's control. Free her before it's too late. Snake, remember your battle with Psycho Mantis? Knock Meryl out like you did back then. That way she won't be able to hurt herself. Snake, use the syringe containing the nanomachine suppressing formula Naomi gave you. If my guess is correct, it should neutralize the beast's control. Give it a shot. Snake. If Mantis ever takes over your body, the Mark III might be able to free you from her control if you let it shock you. Shock me? Yeah. A few shocks to your system should affect your nanomachines. That ought to mess up her control to some degree. You want me 
to shock myself. Never been into that S&M stuff. Look, Snake, just give it a shot. Uh, I mean, the, the Mark III. Use it to break free of her control. Watch out for the ghosts coming out of Mantis's puppets. Touch one, and she'll make a puppet of you, too. Snake, you have a way to suppress nanomachine activity, don't you? So go ahead and give it a shot. Use the syringe you got from Naomi. You should be able to suppress the nanomachines that way. Snake, puppeteering requires a delicate hand. Attacking the beast's hands a few times might shock her into letting go of the puppets. You see, she uses the ghosts projected from her puppets to control her victims. Without those puppets, she'll be paralyzed, I'm sure of it. Attack her hands, then steal those puppets. Snake, without those puppets, the beast can't control her victims. Focus your attacks on the puppets. Get her to drop them, and she'll be completely helpless. Aim for the puppets. I've got an idea. What if you use those puppets to turn the tables on the beast? Control her instead. Huh. Use the puppets? It's worth a try, at least. First, select one in the item window. Then, press the attack button to shoot out a ghost, just like a weapon. If the ghost hits its target, it's showtime. Got all that, Snake? Go on, take her for a spin. Next time you pick up a puppet, give it a try. <sighs> Otacon, I hit it with the ghost, but it didn't work. Um, maybe you should try acting like a puppeteer. In other words, try tilting your controller back and forth and side to side. Channel your inner puppeteer. Take complete control over the beast. Uh, it's no use, Otacon. I can't control her with this puppet. You can't? I'm pretty sure. Oh, I... Oh! What? The beast has two puppets. The one you stole must be the one she uses to control dead bodies. It's only for dead bodies. I wasn't paying close attention, so I can't be sure. But I think the beast uses different puppets depending on who she's controlling. In other words, different puppets for the living and the dead. Try stealing the other puppet. If my guess is correct, that one should work. Okay. I'll give it a shot. Snake, I noticed that Enhanced Soldier was acting a little, uh, off. I equip Mantis's puppet, press the attack button like with any other weapon, and that ghost shot out of it. And then all of a sudden you could control him? Well, he was moving in sync with how I shook the controller. Snake... With those puppets, maybe you could control Mantis, too. I was just thinking the same thing. Okay, go ahead and try it again. I think it'll work, and it could give you the edge you need. Gotcha. Snake, I'd be willing to bet the beast's outer shell offers even greater protection than a blast suit. It's far tougher than any of the beasts we've seen so far. But by the looks of it, this beast suit has a little more volume than the others. It must use some pretty exotic material, stuff you wouldn't normally see in infantry. Assuming they wanted the maximum effect per volume, I'd say it's some kind of metal alloy, tungsten or depleted uranium, something of comparable density. Look at how it's moving. That armor is heavy. It must be restricting her range of motion. Listen to me, Snake. When controlling Mantis with the puppet, try to jerk it around as hard as you can. That should cause a fair bit of damage from the sheer strain on the beast's body. <sighs> Interesting. Could be worth a try. No matter how tough that shell is, it's still just a human being inside. Shake it hard enough, and the beast should break. Sounds like a plan. I'll give it a shot. When the beast's victims take damage or get knocked out, it looks like they're temporarily freed from its control. Huh. Maybe because the shock of the attack creates a disturbance in the nanomachine interface. But then, knocking them out wouldn't... or would it? I... well, anyway, whatever the reason, it's something that can work to your advantage. Don't hesitate to use it. Just don't get carried away and kill any of your comrades, okay? If you can knock them out or put them to sleep, all the better. Snake, use the puppet. Equip it by selecting it in the item window. Once it's equipped, Press the attack button to shoot out a ghost. 
After the ghost hits its target, tilt the controller to control the enemy. When you get control of the beast body, jerk it around. That'll really do some damage. Make her dance, Snake. It looks like conventional weapon attacks won't even scratch Mantis. Really? I hadn't noticed. Any ideas? I'm sorry. Nothing I can think of right now. There must be some way, though. That beast is the only thing standing between you and the server room. You've got to take her out. Snake, watch out for those soldiers the beast is controlling. They might attack you, but they're not your enemies. Got that? Knock them unconscious. Watch out, Snake. Don't let her cling to you. Keep your distance. Get away from her. If she grabs you, you'll get burned. Don't let her get close to you. Whatever you do, stay out of her reach. The coast is clear. Quick, use this chance to head toward GW. Run, Snake. You've got to get to the server room while Meryl is still holding out. Run for it. Meryl and Akiba have got your back. Get to the server room as fast as you can. Go! Our prayers are with you. Run, Snake! It's do or die time, Snake. That area is outfitted with high-energy microwave emitters to deter intruders. Your body will take damage just by being in there. Not even the sneaking suit can shield you. Listen, Snake, you don't want to be in there for even one second more than you have to. Move it! Get to the server room! The Mark III is getting beat up by those microwaves, too. I never designed it to operate in such a strong EM field. Its drive control system has four layers of built-in redundancy, and two of those layers have failed already. At this rate, I don't know how much longer the Mark III can last. But I promise you this, it'll stay with you all the way, even if it's running on a single motor. So don't let us down, Snake. Keep moving. I know it hurts, Snake, but hang in there. Get through to the other side before you're cooked. The longer it takes, the worse it'll be on your body. One foot in front of the other, Snake. You can make it. You're almost there, Snake. Move like your life depends on it, because it does. I'm with you, friend. So please, hold on a little longer. This is the home stretch. You're just steps away. Make it through there and you're at the server room. Snake, everything depends on you making it across alive. Hang on. Come on, Snake. Keep going. Come on. Let's get going, Snake. There's nothing more I can tell you, Snake. It's between you and him now. Take Liquid down, Snake. Finish him off, Snake. You can do this, Snake. You can beat him. How you liking that iPod, Snake? They say certain types of music can help relieve stress. If you're feeling run down, why not take a break? Listen to a few tunes. Snake? Got an update for me, Rose. Snake, are you all right? You tell me. It's Rose. What's the verdict? Hi, it's Rose. What's my status? Anything wrong, Snake? Just checking in. Sorry if I kept you waiting. <laughs> no problem. What's the situation? Do you need something? Up for a quick psych analysis. How are things going, Snake? Dandy. Are you doing all right, Snake? <laughs> Hanging in there. It looks like your psych gauge is okay for now. Well, at least there's some good news. No problems with your psych gauge, I see. Cool. I see you've got plenty of psych left. Great, thanks. But the enemy's on your tail, and it's putting you under a lot of stress. Find safety as soon as you can. But being sought by the enemy leads to considerable psychological pressure. Try and get back to safety as soon as possible. But remember you're in danger, Snake. Stay alert and focus on getting to safety. But you're deep behind enemy lines. There's no telling when danger might strike next. Stay alert and proceed with caution. But you're in tight quarters, and there must be dozens of enemies looking for you. Do everything you can to avoid contact with them. But there's no telling when you might encounter an enemy patrol. Please be careful. Don't let them find you. Let's see, your psych is looking a bit low. <sighs> You seem to be having problems with your psych. Well... You should try and up your psych. Right. And the enemy's after you, too. It'll be difficult to recover your psych in this state. Get to safety as soon as you can. And you're being pursued by the enemy. Not exactly the best conditions for recovering your psych. The sooner you can get to safety, the better. And with the enemy on your trail, you can't concentrate on getting your psych back up. 
You'll have to find safety first. It's okay. I know you'll be fine. Don't give up. I know you can do it, Snake. Hang in there. You're going to make it out of this. I know you will. Oh, hi, Snake. Rose. Hello, Snake. What do you have for me, Rose? Yes, Snake? Just here for my checkup. Need something? What's up, Doc? What's up, Snake? Got an update for me. What's on your mind? Just checking in. Hi, this is Rose. I need an update on my psych. This is Rose. How can I help? I need a psych check. Rose here. How's it going? Super. Your psych is looking good right now. Nothing to worry about so far as I can see. Hmm. <laughs> good. Hmm. You've got plenty of psych. You should be in good shape to complete the mission. All right, then. Your psych is in excellent condition. Everything looks good to go. Great. Thanks. There doesn't seem to be any problem with your psych. So far, so good. Proceed with the mission. Got it. Good for you, Snake. You're taking great care of your psych. No worries on my end. <sighs> Glad to hear it. I'm impressed, Snake. You're keeping your psych up better than I expected. Maybe you were right about not needing my help. <laughs> your psych is starting to slip a little. Are you all right? I'll be fine. It looks like your psych has dropped. Are you feeling okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I see your psych is a little bit low. <laughs> your psych could look a lot better than this. I'll keep that in mind. You're starting to get pretty low on psych. Yeah, I know. Your psych is down significantly. You should start thinking about recovering it. You're the boss. You've lost quite a bit of psych. You ought to do something about that. Right. Your psych is in bad shape. You should really think about that. I'll look into it. You've lost a large amount of psych. You'd better take care of that right away. Got it. Your psych is getting dangerously low. You need to recover it. I know. I know. You'll be putting yourself at risk if you lose any more psych. Take any steps necessary to recover it. Will do. Your psych is at an extremely dangerous level. You need to take immediate action to recover it. Got it. If you're that full of energy, there's nothing for me to worry about. You're doing fine, Snake. Go ahead and focus on the mission. Snake, what's gotten into you? I mean, you know I'm always here for a talk as long as it doesn't interfere with the mission, but... Snake, your psych is right where it needs to be. Focus your energy on the mission. Good luck. Snake, I think you've got a lot of stress built up. Try to relieve some of it. It'll help your psych gauge. It looks like your psych is down. Do what you can to change that by getting rid of stressors. Snake, you should try and recover your psych. I've already explained a number of ways to do it. Pick one that's convenient and get your psych back up. Take my advice. Work on building back your psych. Trust me, it'll make a big difference in your mission. I think you'd better stop and recover your psych before you go any further. Snake, I'm behind you 100%. Don't give up. Snake, what makes you tense? Stressors, the factors that cause stress, can be divided into several types. They can be psychological, social, biological, chemical, or physical. In battlefield terms, that corresponds to the presence of enemies, the battlefield environment, biological and chemical weapons, and physical wounds and hunger caused by combat. Any of these factors can cause stress to build up. So you need to pay attention not only to your health, but also to your psych, especially when engaged in combat. Stress is an adaptive response your body takes to protect itself when confronted by a threat. It happens to everybody. There are no exceptions. Everyone gets stressed sometimes. Fear, anxiety, and worry are examples of psychological stress responses. Some people might not like to admit they have these negative feelings inside, but being aware of your own stress is essential to keeping it under control. You can't fight an enemy you know nothing about, right? The same is true of stress. To recover your psych, you need to know where your stress is coming from. Give me a call whenever you feel it getting low. In order to effectively manage your stress, you first need to assess it. Think about what happens to people when they get tense. Some people feel more tired than usual. Others experience stronger emotions or exhibit incoherent behavior or become dependent on things like alcohol or tobacco. <sighs> tobacco, huh? Some experience insomnia, depression, or have trouble concentrating. Others find themselves feeling apathetic, mentally drained. Everyone has their own way of reacting to stress. The important thing is to get a feel for what effect stress has on you. 
pay attention to your sight gauge to learn what sort of situation causes it to go down. One method of managing stress is taking the more obvious routes. Overeating, drinking alcohol, smoking, complaining or acting irritable, relying on sleeping pills. These are only short-term fixes and may lead to addiction or other serious problems. In your case, Snake, smoking seems to help recover your psych. But it's not a good idea to become dependent on it. I'd advise you to watch your intake. One method of stress management is to get your mind off the problem for a while. Watch TV or a movie. Look at paintings or pretty scenery. Get some rest. Take a break. Keep yourself busy with a hobby. All these things work well, but bear in mind they're really nothing more than emergency stopgap measures. There's still the matter of getting to the root of the problem. I don't see any TVs around here. And the scenery... <sighs> <laughs> well, how about paintings or sculptures or listening to music? That works, too. Or sometimes it helps if you stand by a river or a pond. Look around for a place or site that might help you recover your psych. The best methods for managing stress are comprehensive methods. Getting a healthy amount of exercise, meditating, letting yourself relax mentally and physically, not focusing on negative thoughts, counseling from a trusted professional. These approaches target both your body and your mind. But I know they aren't exactly convenient for someone in the middle of battle. So, Snake, try one of the easier techniques instead. To keep your stress levels under control, use whatever method is available to you at the time. That'll help you maintain a high level of psych. I'm not sure if you consider me a trusted professional, but I am here if you ever need to talk. I might even be able to help. Ever since the Iraq War, the U.S. military has deployed CSPs to the battlefield to counteract PTSD among soldiers. CSP stands for Combat Stress Platoon. They're there to care for soldiers' mental health. Each CSP, including mine, is comprised of a doctor, two psychologists, and three counselors. Nowadays, though, most cases are dealt with internally by nanomachines, the SOP system. I can't help but feel there are serious ethical issues with manipulating people's senses like that. Though I must admit, the system has led to a dramatic drop in the number of soldiers exhibiting symptoms of shell shock. The primary mission of CSPs like mine is to provide care for soldiers suffering from combat stress. Sounds like a good gig. The symptoms were first identified during the American Civil War. During World War I, they called it shell shock. Today, it's known as post-traumatic stress disorder, or PTSD. You mean combat fatigue. Right. That's how soldiers have referred to it. Unlike external wounds, psychological damage is not readily visible, making it that much harder to detect. The only way to diagnose it is to look at the victim's stress level and determine whether or not he's able to effectively engage in battle. In some cases, soldiers display symptoms of PTSD immediately after undergoing a traumatic experience. When these symptoms persist for more than two days, it's referred to as ASD, or acute stress disorder. When they last for more than a month, it's called PTSD. Left untreated, ASD can develop into PTSD, so it needs to be taken care of as quickly as possible. If something stressful happens to you, let me know right away. When a soldier is suffering from combat stress, it's extremely important that we respond quickly and effectively. Today, we use the term 4R in PIES to describe this action. The 4R in 4R in PIES stands for four words that describe the response. Reassurance. Getting the soldier to feel at ease. For example, we might get his commanding officer or supervisor to tell him he's okay. Rest. Letting the soldier cool down mentally and physically. Replenishment. Having the soldier recharge his batteries by eating and sleeping. And restoration, having the soldier talk about his feelings and getting him to calm down. The four R's represent the core thinking behind dealing with soldiers who suffer from stress. The pies in four R and pies can be thought of as the principles that guide the execution of the four R's. Proximity, staying close to the soldier. Immediacy, acting quickly. Expectancy, giving the soldier hope that he'll get better. And simplicity taking care of him in a clear and uncomplicated manner. Take the first letter of each principle and you get the word pies. Snake, you can apply these principles yourself when managing your own stress. 
When your psych runs low, act quickly and appropriately to remedy the situation. I'm trusting you to take care of yourself. In recent years, more and more Special Forces units have started to hold debriefing sessions after missions, giving team members a chance to talk to each other, which can reduce the risk of developing combat stress. Hmm. Debriefings are nothing new. We've always used them to deliver post-action reports. Those reports are important too, but I'm talking about using debriefings specifically as a stress management tool. <laughs> they... they really do all that? <laughs> yeah, they do. Let me give you an example of how to conduct a debriefing. First, everybody sits in a circle and goes over the rules. That is, they agree that anything discussed does not go beyond that room. Then they take turns and tell the others about what happened to them on the mission. It doesn't matter who goes first. <sighs> After that, they describe the first thing they thought of at the time, relate how they felt and reacted. The realizations they come to during that process help them rearrange their thoughts, and at the end they go over their feelings once again. Adorable. Sharing each other's experiences like this and having others understand where you're coming from helps relieve stress. There's actually a term for these debriefings where everybody gets together and talks after the mission. They're called CISDs, Critical Incident Stress Debriefings. CISDs have become popular as a stress management technique among firefighters and others involved in disaster relief. They say being at a disaster site is just like being on a battlefield. The stress you endure is as serious as a soldier's. So the concept of CIS developed at around the same time the term PTSD first began to appear. Now military and police organizations are starting to pick up on CISD. It's proving just as effective at dealing with stress among soldiers as it is among firefighters. Rose, don't some types of people get stressed more easily than others? That's a good point. Go-getters for one, serious types also. Studies have shown that this type of person is more prone to stress. Lately, they've been doing physiological screenings through blood tests to determine which types of people suffer the most psychological stress in combat. The results are used to help determine which units soldiers should be assigned to. In a way, it's just another kind of threat management. You can tell that much from blood. Well, I wouldn't stake my reputation on it, but you could say there's kind of a trend. Some experts even claim that some genes may make people more susceptible to fear. Hmm. Kind of like the flip side of soldier genes. Right. Soldier genes. Rose, how do I keep my psych from going down? Isn't there a way to develop resistance to stress? Well, there are many types of training that involve extremely high levels of stress, like escape and evasion or ranger training. But what you need is to focus on managing the stress as it accumulates. It's not healthy to let it build up inside. No matter how big the cup, Keep pouring water into it, and eventually it's going to overflow. Snake, you have to dump some of that water out once in a while. Here's what you need to know. The best way for us to confront combat stress is not to train ourselves to resist it, but to train ourselves to recognize internalized stress early on and release it. Recognize it. <sighs> in your case, you can assess your stress level by looking at your psych gauge. Always keep an eye on it. Are you familiar with the term catharsis? Catharsis, sure. It comes from a Greek word meaning cleansing. When we remember a traumatic past experience, it causes us to feel afraid, distressed, insecure, and we tend to suppress those feelings. Allowing ourselves to express these pent-up emotions removes that burden and relieves our psychological tensions. It's called catharsis. We experience catharsis in our daily lives in many different ways, by telling others how we feel, or by painting a picture, watching sports, going on a trip, or even yelling at the top of our lungs. Snake, if you ever feel like a past experience is making you feel uncomfortable, talk to me about it. It could help you experience catharsis. I'll, uh, keep it in mind. The process we use to prevent or relieve stress is called coping. There are two basic types, problem-focused and emotion-focused. The first type targets the stress factors themselves while the second works to alleviate the suffering caused by that stress. Going back to what I said earlier, changing your environment by getting to a place where you can relax is problem-focused coping, while changing your mood by eating and resting is emotion-focused coping. Choosing the right coping technique for the right situation can save your life. 
I can help you with that, if you'll let me. All right. In psychology, mental and emotional wounds are known as trauma. Of course, in your line of work, you use the word trauma a little differently. Yeah, like trauma pads. Body armor woven from high tensile fibers can stop bullets and shrapnel from penetrating. But in the end, it's no more than a piece of cloth. It does nothing to stop the bullet's kinetic energy from being transferred to the wearer's soft tissue. You're lucky if you get off with just bruises. More than likely, you're left with a few fractures, broken bones. That's why you wear trauma pads. To absorb the shock so it does as little damage as possible. They make all kinds of them. Some have steel plates designed to diffuse the shock of impact over a wide area. Others use shock-absorbing gels to convert kinetic energy into heat. That's all well and good if you're only worried about your body, Snake. But so far, nobody's invented armor against psychological trauma. That's where I come in. If you ever need anything, don't hesitate to give me a call. So, you finally met your mother. That must have been quite a shock. I don't have any memories of my mother, or being raised by anything even resembling one. All I remember is my training. Training to become a soldier. I've read cases of young children who didn't receive enough affection from their parents or guardians. Upon reaching adulthood, they often developed psychological problems, showed signs of social maladjustment. They conducted an experiment where a baby monkey was given a choice of nursing from a doll made of wire or a doll made of fur. The baby always opted for the latter, and in so doing, became more emotionally stable. Are you implying something? No. Are you familiar with the effects of relaxation? As much as anyone else. I like to have a good time. In a state of relaxation, muscle tension is released. Breathing and pulse become slower, and blood pressure is kept at reasonable levels. Brain activity also becomes calmer, inhibiting anxiety and depression. It helps you settle down and reduces the amount of stress you're feeling. Mm -hmm. I could use some of that. It's hard to get anything done when you're flustered. The simplest method of relaxation is muscle relaxation. Muscle relaxation involves tensing up a certain muscle and then releasing the tension to get it accustomed to feeling limp. As you repeat the process of tensing and releasing, the shift to the limp state, that is the relaxed state, gradually becomes more natural. The usual method is to start with your arm and face muscles, then move down through your chest and abdomen and finish with your legs. Tension can really build up in both body and mind on these long missions. I'd seriously consider taking a break and using relaxation techniques at least once every hour. Mm, thanks for the tip. One technique you can use to relax is autogenic training, which employs self-suggestion. What? It's a behavioral therapy in which you regulate both mind and body by changing their respective states. You assume a relaxed position and think of a formula that expresses your body's sense of weight and temperature. You then chant this formula in your mind until your body feels as if it's actually experiencing that state. Once you've mastered one formula, you move on to the next. In repeating this process, your body gradually transitions toward the state expressed in the formula, and eventually you learn to regulate body and mind. Uh, I've heard something like that before. A guy from the New Zealand SAS told me about it. When it's cold outside but too dangerous to build a fire, they look at a picture of a fire instead. Said it made their bodies feel warmer. <laughs> you know, it's just another form of self-suggestion. If you think something hard enough, you can produce actual physiological changes in your body. They may have come up with that technique themselves through experience, but I suspect they had a little help from a psychologist. Kind of like you. Yeah, kind of like me. We counselors often talk about stress assessments. I understand you soldiers have your own type of assessment, threat assessment. Right. An accurate evaluation of your opponent before you take action. <laughs> that makes sense. Incorporating enemy psychology into your threat assessment and management enables you to locate, evade, and engage the enemy more efficiently. Not only does it give you an advantage, it helps you seize the initiative on the battlefield as a whole. For someone in your situation, it's absolutely essential to remain sensitive to the enemy's psychological state, to their emotions. The little girl you have with you, Sunny, right? Yeah. She's got a bit of a stutter, doesn't she? Yeah, she's been like that as long as I've known her. Any idea why? 
There are a lot of underlying factors, but at the risk of oversimplifying, I think we have to consider the possibility that living in isolation from the outside world is placing her under a lot of stress. Stress? Sunny chooses not to go outside. It's what she wants. It's what she thinks she wants. Sooner or later, she's going to have to breathe the outside air. She can see the outside through a window, but it's never going to be the same as reaching out and touching the real world. <sighs> I know. Jack rescued Sunny from the Patriots, and you and Dr. Emmerich are taking care of her. But she hasn't been saved yet. Look, we're only trying to do what Sunny wants. What do you want me to do? Let her know she's not alone. The outside world is full of pain and suffering. You need to let Sunny know that you'll always be there for her. She's still just a little girl. Show her some sympathy once in a while, okay? Yeah, sure. So this solid eye, it can detect and inform you of what emotions people are feeling? Dr. Emmerich told me all about it. The muscle groups in our faces move in specific patterns depending on the emotion being experienced. There's been a lot of research done on this, and the theory is being applied by intelligence and law enforcement agencies. Dr. Emmerich tells me the solid eye uses LIDAR to scan the target's face and pick up subtle muscle movements. And it picks up other physical reactions as well, like the way blood flows to the legs when we're afraid, or concentrates in the upper body when we get angry. Changes in pulse rate, skin temperature, sweat secretion. It takes all this information and calculates people's emotions with amazing accuracy. No kidding. And here I thought it was all smoke and mirrors. <laughs> Our emotions have a significant impact on how we act. Knowing how people feel gives you a strategic edge. It must process data in much the same way as the nanomachines in SOP. I have to say, even speaking as a psychologist, your friend has developed quite a reliable system. Snake, the gauge below your life gauge is your psych gauge. Yeah, you told me about that. Then you'll hear it again. Psych? That's right. The psych gauge affects the rate at which your life gauge recovers. In other words, how fast your wounds heal. It also greatly influences how well you perform various actions. When your psych gauge is full, your life recovers quickly and you shouldn't have any problems doing what you need to do. Remember, your body isn't the only thing driving your performance. Your mind is every bit as important. Hey, I don't let my mental state affect my combat efficiency. You may think that, Snake, but the truth is, you're, you're not as young as you used to be. Hmm, <laughs> could have fooled me. It's your psych that's keeping you alive inside. So you better take it seriously. Keep a close eye on your psych gauge. All right, all right. Snake, your psych gauge is affected by the conditions you're in. Staying in a place that's too hot or too cold or being exposed to combat conditions for extended periods causes stress to build up in your body and mind. The more tension you've accumulated, the more your psych gauge decreases. As the gauge decreases, it starts to negatively affect your performance. Your hands start to shake, and your life gauge recovers more slowly. Vision gets blurry, and you can't make out your targets. All of these things impair your ability to complete the mission. So be sure and keep an eye on your psych gauge at all times. Here's a good way to think about your psych gauge. Low psych equals high stress. So the best way to replenish your psych gauge is to relieve your stress. Being pursued by the enemy can be a tremendous source of stress. By the same token, staying out of sight and giving your body a rest relieves stress and allows the sight gauge to recover. Find a safe place where you can crouch or lie down and just lay low for a while. Also, just getting out of extreme heat or cold can have a positive effect on the gauge. Pay attention to how the sight gauge moves and find a stress relief technique that works for you. Eating replenishes more than just your stamina. It also helps your sight gauge recover. Since ancient times, military commanders have struggled with the problem of how to secure food for their men. How much soldiers get fed, not to mention how well, has a direct effect on morale. Back when wars were fought between absolute monarchies, the maximum distance an army could travel in a day was limited to the distance from one supply point to the next. The quality of the food is a major factor, too. During World War II, 
American battleships housed vending machines that were stocked with cigarettes, soft drinks, and ice cream. They called them gedunk bars. The phrase is still used by sailors and marines today. Mmm, ice cream. Tasty. Apparently, they even built special floating ice cream factories capable of producing 5,000 gallons of ice cream an hour to feed soldiers on ships too small to have their own gedunk bars. They even had their choice, soft or hard. Napoleon once said, an army moves on its belly. He knew what he was talking about. Speaking of food, Snake, Colonel, we're in the middle of something here. Have you ever eaten rations from a country other than the U.S.? Of course I have. The U.N. recently held a ration swap meet between military attachés from each member state. It was a momentous development in the cultivation of mutual understanding of other countries' cuisine. Roy, this isn't really the time. On the contrary. I want you to hear this too, Rose. I've already heard it a hundred... You'll survive. Anyway, Snake, I did a taste test and found that French rations were generally the best. The Italians weren't bad either. And the Japanese stuff was much better than I expected. Really? That's wonderful. But everyone seemed to agree that the worst rations of all were ours. America for the win. All right. So what's your point? Yep, it must be nice to live in a country that knows how to cook. Those French rations. Delicieux. I wish you could have been there to try some snake. And, oh, you too, Rose. <laughs> Colonel, what exactly are you? Some of the best food I'd ever tasted, Rose. I'm sorry, Snake. Ever since he went to that swap meet, it's all he can talk about. You think he'd never had a decent meal in his life. No kidding. Huh. Wait a minute. Rose, who does the cooking at your house? Me. Roy does it. What are you getting at? Uh, nothing. Never mind. Colonel? Hmm? My sympathies. It's appreciated, Snake. I actually like those American rations. Snake, you're a smoker, aren't you? Not this again. <laughs> Just hear me out. <sighs> yeah. I wouldn't want someone smoking in front of my kids, of course. But from a stress management perspective, smoking is obviously an effective relaxation measure for people like you. It actually raised your psych, didn't it? <clears throat> it, uh, yeah. But even so, I'm not going to downplay its effects on your health. Your life gauge actually went down, didn't it? And the smell of tobacco can attract the enemy. Yeah, I guess you're right. Think carefully before lighting up, Snake. I'll leave it at that. Believe it or not, bad smells can be a source of stress for people. It's probably safest to stay away from any place that's crawling with maggots. Why? How about because they're attracted to the stench? These insects tend to spawn near rotting food, animal carcasses, and excrement, all of which emit foul odors. The smell can cause loss of focus and will have a harmful effect on your sight gauge, so stay as far away from those things as you can. Even if you get away from the source, the smell will still have a negative effect on your sight gauge if it clings to your body. If that's the case, it's crucial you find a way to get rid of the stench as soon as possible. Snake, hot places can cause your sight gauge to go down too. Be careful. Hot places? So much for my Hawaiian getaway. Catching some rays at a seaside resort is nothing like being stuck out in a scorching desert. Extreme temperatures and intense direct sunlight can cause your psych to drop rapidly. If you're going to be in that type of environment for an extended period, you'll need to take measures to replenish your psych. Snake being in a cold environment saps your psych. When operating in an Arctic environment, the trick is to know how to take steps to recover that lost psych. Snake, you should be careful about how much weight you're carrying. I'm sure a big, strong guy like you can carry a considerable amount of gear, but the stress of lugging heavy loads around can have a negative effect on your mental state, causing your sight gauge to go down. But you never know what kind of equipment I'll need handy. I'm not saying you shouldn't ever carry a lot of gear. I'm just saying it has its drawbacks. That's all. At times, the enemy may get within close range and engage you in hand-to-hand -hand combat. They grab you by the neck. You feel hot breath in your ear. The feeling you experience in that instant, that undeniable sense of pure hatred, is bound to have a negative effect on your sight gauge. 
so don't let the enemy get that close. Don't let them touch you. That area is swarming with flies. Something nearby must be emitting a bad smell. The stress from those odors will decrease your psyche. Get away from there. You can wash odors away from your body by submerging yourself in water or rolling around on the ground. Or you could change your clothes to get rid of the smell. Snake, look at yourself. What? These bugs? Let me guess. The smell's making my sight go down. I'd say so, yes. And if I get rid of the source of the smell, it should help me recover psych, right? Roll around on the ground or submerge yourself in water. Or change your clothes. Whatever works best for you. Um, Snake, allow me to be frank. You stink. You should take care of that before it affects your sight gauge. You know how to do that, right? You can tell whether the smell's gone by checking to see if your little friends are still floating around. Snake, you seem to be in a very hot place, and I think your sight gauge is suffering as a result. You should get out of there and find someplace cooler. It looks like you're in an especially cold place. As long as you stay there, your sight gauge will continue to decrease. You should get out of there as soon as possible. Rose, I'm feeling a little run down. I can tell. I think your gear might be a little too heavy. What do you think? Yeah, could be. Is that what's got my sight down? Most likely. Why not try unequipping anything you're not using right at this moment? The combined weight of all your gear is eating away at your sight gauge. Isn't there anything you can afford to unequip? It looks like your load has gotten too heavy. Your sight gauge is starting to decrease. You might want to trim some fat, if at all possible. Rose, I'm feeling kind of tired. Hmm, your sight gauge is down too. What happened? Ah, some guy got me in a chokehold. That's why I'm feeling stressed out, right? Snake, you should find a safe place and take steps to recover your psych. The sooner, the better. Got it. The enemy is human too. Their emotions and environment affect their actions the same way yours do. When emotions run high, it clouds judgment and makes it harder to locate the enemy. Even if you see something with your eyes, it may not necessarily register in your consciousness. Getting the enemy emotionally worked up should work to your advantage. Something to think about, anyway. Different soldiers have different kinds of personalities, just like how you're different from others. Some people are timid. Some have short tempers. Some don't sweat the small stuff. Introducing psychological disturbances into the equation amplifies enemy emotions. Observe how the enemy behaves, how they talk, or use the solid eye to view their data. Then use that information to assess their personality type. It's a valuable tool. Use it. Threats and gunshots aren't the only things that can have a psychological impact on a foe. No one likes having a bomb blow up right next to them, or hearing a comrade's screams or other loud noises, not to mention actually getting attacked and taking damage. All these things can have an impact on a soldier's mental state, and as a result, their emotional state suffers massive damage. In general, soldiers operate together to make up teams and units. When a soldier is about to get hurt and his comrade sees that with his own eyes, the psychological impact of the threat extends to the comrade as well. Fear, joy, anger, sadness. As each of these emotions build, they can produce a range of unique behaviors. A person might suddenly stop fighting and run away, or become paralyzed, weeping and wailing uncontrollably. They might fire their weapon at random, or just stand there and laugh wildly. If instability continues to worsen, they may, in some cases, even lose consciousness. In my work with the CSP, I've seen all these behaviors manifest themselves at one point or another. Rose, got a sec. Well, this is a surprise. What's the occasion? I've been having these dreams, where I get shot and die. I'm sneaking around and suddenly someone shoots me from behind. Or I'm in a gun battle and I get shot through the heart. You've faced being shot at countless times before, haven't you? So? In psychology, dreams are interpreted as messages from your subconscious. They may be trying to tell you that if you keep this up, you'll die like you do in your dreams. So, it's telling me not to repeat the mistakes I've made in my dreams. Okay. I'll have to be more careful when I see enemies with guns. Maybe spend more time sneaking around their backs, especially when there's shooting going on. 
That sounds like a good plan. Be careful, Snake. Rose, something's going on. I've been getting this weird feeling, like I died once already, and it was from a gunshot. Just seeing an enemy carrying a gun has been putting me on edge. Snake, your decades of experience might be trying to tell you something. Maybe it's a warning that the bullet that will finally kill you is coming when your back is turned. Tell me, what would you do if you saw a teammate engaging in risky behavior? Say, recklessly charging the enemy or letting their mind wander in the middle of a firefight. I'd tell him not to get himself or me killed. Well, think of it this way. There's another you inside your subconscious that's telling you the same thing. Ah, uh, I see. Get back to the basics. Use the right stick to look for the enemy. Move cautiously and stay out of sight. I should start listening to my other me. Exactly. Take care of yourself out there, Snake. Rose, you there? There's something I wanted to ask you. You're not hurt, are you? Hurt? What are you talking about? Oh, nothing. Just making sure. Forget I asked. What's the matter? I was catching a few minutes of shut-eye, and I had a dream. A dream where you were in an explosion. It seemed so real, I couldn't help but get a little worried. Relax, I'm alive. Death by explosion, huh? It's true. One blast and I'm off to meet my maker. Not all explosives are the stationary bomb type. For example, if you hear a pin being pulled out of a grenade, you know what's coming next. You need to be aware of these things. Yeah, I'll make a point of it. Thanks for looking out for me, Rose. Don't mention it. Rose, you ever have a flashback of a past experience, only it happens differently in the flashback than in real life? A halo jump, for example. You mean the military freefall technique that special forces use? Well, what happens differently? Lately, I've been having these flashbacks where I'm doing a jump, except I'm not wearing a parachute. I just fall and fall and then slam into the ground. Hmm. Perhaps your subconscious is presenting you with a revised version of your past memory as a way of warning you about something in real life. Why the hell would my subconscious do that? Well, if it were a dream, we'd call it a warning dream. In any case, I guess it's just important to recognize the danger of falling when you're in high places. Keep a close eye on your grip gauge while you're hanging. It's affected by how much psych you have left, so you need to take your psych gauge into consideration as well. Exercise caution. Got it. I guess that means no more careless rolls near the edge of a cliff. I certainly hope so. Rose, I keep getting these visions of being stabbed to death whenever I see a knife. It's not quite deja vu, but just seeing one of those things gives me a feeling like I'm being stabbed. I see. It's said that the shorter the physical distance between you and the enemy, the stronger your psychological resistance to violence becomes. It may be that the knife symbolizes close quarters combat, and it's evoking an image of your own death. So, my subconscious is warning me not to get gutted? Perhaps. It's only a theory. Wasn't real high on my to-do list anyway. I know, Snake. If you encounter an enemy with a knife, watch out. What could you do? Let's see. You could avoid standing directly in front of them. Or roll to the side. Or step back to avoid a close quarters attack. <laughs> I know it must sound funny for me to be giving you this kind of advice. No, it's good advice. I think it's helping. Contact me anytime. Rose, I know it sounds weird, but I can't shake this feeling that I've drowned before. Like deja vu? Well, more like I have this gut feeling, like I died underwater at some point. Are you afraid of water? I'm not afraid of anything. Then I wonder what it could be. Except now it feels like I'm more aware than ever of drowning. I'm paying more attention to my O2 gauge and coming up for air more regularly. That's a good thing, then. As long as you're aware of that danger and how to avoid it, you'll be able to respond more effectively to real-life crises. You're right. No more risky underwater maneuvers for me. Good to hear it, Snake. That's what we're all hoping for. That you'll finish the mission and come home safely. Hmm. That'd be nice.
Anyway, sorry to bother you. Not at all. You can call me any time, Snake. Rose, I feel kind of dumb bringing this up, but... It's okay. You can tell me. You see, I... I died recently. Died? Well, I can't shake the feeling that I've died before. I can't quite describe the sensation. It's like I died and then restarted the mission. I also get the sense that I'm watching myself from a distance, over my own shoulder. Hmm. It may be a mild case of depersonalization disorder. Meaning? It's nothing to be concerned about. It could be caused by some trauma you suffered in the past. In the past? What do you think it is? I can't say for sure, but this feeling that you've died before? Snake, maybe it's a warning about death in real life. What do you mean by warning? Your subconscious is constantly trying to get you to visualize death in your explicit conscious. So I should what? Act carefully? Avoid death? That's right. It's making sure you know that even you should fear death. After all, everybody's praying for you to come back safely. So please, Snake, be careful out there. Use your head before you act. I'll be more careful. Thanks. Hey, Snake, you have some Munya, right? What? It's a type of herb that grows wild in South America. You can use it to make tea. Oh, you mean the plant. Yeah. You know the light, minty scent it gives off when squeezed? Well, that smell supposedly helps alleviate the symptoms of altitude sickness. I wonder if it might help your sight gauge recover a little faster, too. Try equipping it the next time you feel your sight getting low. Rose, you were right about that Munya. It's making my psych recover faster. Really? That's great. Thanks for the tip. It was my pleasure. Snake, are you okay? Your psych's looking awfully low there. Yeah. I can't seem to get out of this slump. You should find a nice, safe place to rest and replenish your psych. It may help to equip some Munya, too, if you have any. Munya? It'll help you to relax and should help your psych gauge recover faster. Okay. I'll give it a try. Keep your friends close, but your enemies far away. After all, getting hung up and choked like that will seriously lower your psyche. Should she get you in a chokehold, shake that freak off right away. Let a battle drag on too long, and it'll start to take its toll on your psyche gauge. Keep that in mind as you fight. Be sure to keep an eye on your psyche gauge when engaging the enemy. You'll get through this, Snake. How's your psych level? Are you holding up okay? You've got to break through there, or you'll never complete the mission. Hang in there, Snake. That beast seems to laugh at everything. At this point, no matter what you say to her, she'll only respond one way. The symptoms resemble those seen in Ganser Syndrome. It's a type of dissociative disorder characterized by irrelevant responses to the situation at hand. It often manifests itself in soldiers under extreme battlefield stress. You mean she's not having a good time out here? I doubt it. I'm starting to wonder if she might not have some kind of deep-seated psychological trauma. Mimicry is a way of making your opponent see something they're not really seeing. It can be very effective in rendering your opponent psychologically vulnerable. It's easy to think she couldn't possibly be here. Be careful you don't fall into that trap. Snake, letting your sight get too low will only lead to physiological problems that can make combat more challenging. Always mind your psych level, even while engaging the enemy. You may think you've got more important things to worry about, but your psych level can have a significant impact on the course of battle. Keep an eye on it. Your psych gauge is getting awfully low. Try and restore it when the enemy's not looking, even if only bit by bit. Your psych is petering, Snake. It's putting you at a disadvantage. The battle's important, but so is recovering your psych. Watch out for her when she comes at you, Snake. She's deadly at close range, just like those enhanced soldiers. Snake, you've got to avoid getting grabbed like that. Don't let her get too close. Always keep your distance. One of the B&B &B Corps enhanced soldiers. She's a lot like the PMC combatants you saw in the Middle East. Nanomachines keep them drugged, suppressing their sense of self. The PTSD they experienced on the battlefield created a hardened shell around them, driving their darkest aspects to the forefront. Suppressed within that shell, an almost inhuman brutality grew and festered. Beauty and the beast are one and the same. War can transform us into one or the other. 
the beast is a manifestation of the darkest aspects of mankind, of war. Which is why, when they are released from their shells, they are so breathtakingly pure and innocent, so beautiful they bring tears to your eyes. Ironic, isn't it? It was a strange sensation, almost like I could feel that presence inside my body. Naturally. What your eyes see is nothing more than a vessel, a mold, but what we actually perceive is the presence inside the vessel. The most innocent aspect of the soldier, encased inside of a beast, polluted by war. That's what you felt. Those soldiers chasing you. The emotional patterns they're displaying are definitely not normal. Intense anger, fear, sadness, all clear off the charts. What in the world happened to them? Snake, right now you've got to keep your focus. Make sure you don't get thrown off. Get to safety as quickly as possible. You're almost to the plaza, Snake. Just a little farther. Watch your sight gauge and hang in there. Just a little farther. Dr. Emmerich's waiting for you in the chopper. You're almost at the chopper. Run, Snake, run. Just forget about the sight gauge for now. Get to the chopper. Snake, I know you must be reeling from everything Big Mama told you, but you've got to get a hold of yourself and focus on bringing Big Boss's body to safety. Protect that van. It's going to take more concentration than usual to attack from a moving bike, and hitting your targets will be that much harder. So keep your hands steady by preventing drops in your psych gauge. Snake, your psych is really low. In your current state, it's going to be hard for you to protect the van. Get your psych level back up now. I don't know much about motorcycles, but it's clear Big Mama's amazingly talented with that bike. It's like danger doesn't even register with her. One false move, though, and you're both done for. That's part of the thrill. She may be affected by what's known as rider's high. I've heard of runner's high. It's a similar phenomenon. Beta endorphins are secreted inside the brain while you run, creating a feeling of intoxication. In other words, a psychological high. Right. I've heard of that. Some motorcyclists have actually reported experiencing the same sort of sensation. It hasn't yet been confirmed psychologically, but that high could make you oblivious to danger. That may explain why she's driving like nothing can stop her. Sounds like a combat high. Kind of wish I wasn't riding shotgun, though. In a combat high, your brain overdoses on adrenaline, not endorphins. But don't worry, Snake. As far as I can tell, she's got skills. And she deserves your faith. Don't relax just yet. You've still got a ways to go. Don't forget to take care of your sight gauge, too. Snake, your sight gauge is getting low. A high level of precision is required to shoot down those enemies flying around you. Get your sight back up and your hands will shake less while aiming. This beast seems to be seething with rage. Anger causes us to lose self-control, making it the most dangerous emotion of all. This makes her extremely dangerous, Snake. Be careful. Snake, I think Dr. Emmerich is on to something. That beast is prone to losing her self-control when she gets angry. Fan the flames of her fury. That should give you an edge in this battle. Use that beast's emotions against her. Snake. Don't forget that your ability to fight is affected by your psych level. No matter how tough your enemy, you need to keep an eye on your psych gauge at all times. Snake, your psych gauge, it's pretty low. Find a relatively safe place and try to get your psych back up. There aren't many safe places left where you can hide. Use whatever technique you can to try to restore your psych. Snake, she may have shed her suit, but she's still consumed by anger. Anger begets anger. It's a vicious cycle. Don't get caught up in it. Stay away from her. She's the same as octopus. She'll cling to you and make you feel her pain. Don't let that beauty touch you, Snake. Big Mama's in pretty bad shape. She's one tough lady, but the strain on her body must be tremendous. Please, Snake, you've got to keep her safe. Snake, Big Mama's under attack. You're the only one who can protect her. Snake, you've got to protect Big Mama. She'll die if this attack keeps up. Snake, how could you? What would possess you to hurt Big Mama like that? Stop it right now. Stop that, Snake. I'm begging you. You, you monster. Ugh. Snake, a link between cruelty to animals and antisocial criminal behavior was established a long time ago. 
If you keep on killing animals for no reason, we will be forced to conduct a thorough psychological review upon your return. Snake, if you're going to lead the way for Big Mama, it's important to keep yourself in good condition. Take care of your sight gauge. Don't forget that. Snake, you've been taking an awful lot of pictures of your mother. I mean, far be it from me to tell you how to, um, amuse yourself, but... Is this really the best time to be updating the family album? Maybe you should consider giving it a rest. Snake, as I'm sure you're aware, Shadow Moses Island is an extremely harsh environment. Staying out there in that raging blizzard will take a severe toll on your psyche. It's not so bad right now since you're indoors, but outside, there's a blizzard raging. Imagine what that'll do to your psych gauge. More than ever before, the success of this mission depends on you taking the proper measures to maintain your psyche. Don't forget that. And if possible, try and find an external heat source. But it looks like that's going to be pretty hard to do. There are plenty of trees, but you can't use a living tree to build a fire. Sure you can. It's not as efficient, but with practice, you can get live wood to burn. Hold on. I think there may be quicker, dirtier ways to do it. Such as... Such as these abandoned vehicles, I'm saying. As long as they've got gas in their tanks, I should be able to set them on fire. Wouldn't the fuel be frozen from sitting out in the cold? The freezing point of gasoline is around minus 90 degrees Fahrenheit. It's not going to freeze in this kind of cold. Oh, I see. But setting a vehicle on fire, isn't that kind of violent? Don't be so uptight. It was just a thought. The weather on Shadow Moses Island is especially harsh. Reduce the strain on your psyche by finding ways to stay out of the wind, like taking shelter behind objects. Good point. Well, at least now your psyche won't be giving you much trouble. Well, at least it's helping you recover your psyche faster, for now. Good point. Well, at least now your psyche won't be giving you much trouble. Well, at least it's helping you recover your psyche faster. Snake, you have to break through that enemy ambush, right? I know you can do it, but you've got to stay calm and act rationally. Got that? Right now, though, you're in a dangerous situation. You must be under considerable mental stress. You need to resolve this situation as quickly as you can and get yourself to safety. On top of that, you're being pursued. There's no way you can concentrate on replenishing your psyche like this. I think your top priority right now should be getting to safety, Snake. At least the enemy doesn't appear to be aware of your presence. This is a good chance to replenish your psyche gauge. Don't pass it up. Another ambush? Not exactly. Things are just a little sticky right now. I need to distract the enemy's attention until the Mark III gets the door open. Listen, Snake. Overwhelming fear can lead to careless mistakes. The important thing here is to remain calm. Keep a clear mind. If anybody can pull this off, it's you. The beast is crying. In psychology, crying is thought of as a way to freely express and release feelings. Kind of like catharsis. Bingo. That beast cries and cries without stopping. There must be some immense sadness in her, the stress of which is tormenting her mentally and physically. Crying is the only way she can deal with it. The blizzard outside is as bad as ever, Snake. The cold places your body under intense stress and wears away at your psyche. Finding a place to take shelter should prevent your gauge from draining. Keep an eye out for something like that and use it to your advantage. Snake, are you... Diving underwater? An extreme low temperature environment like that will suck your sight gauge dry. Hurry up and get out. Snake, your body is still soaking wet. You don't need me to tell you what it's doing to your sight gauge. Hurry and get yourself dried out. Snake, your psych level isn't looking too good. Find the safest place you can and try to restore it. Each of the beauties has reached for your embrace, and I'll bet this one is no different. Snake, you can't let her get close to you. Stay away. Her embrace is deadly, so keep your distance. Snake? Oh, Rose. It's you. I'm glad to see you're safe. You're not hurt too seriously, are you? No. I'll live. I was listening in on the b and B's stories, too. It's heartbreaking. Those things happen every day on the battlefield. But you're right. They're never easy to hear. They've all suffered such unimaginable trauma. Hearing the cries of phantom infants in your head, facing flashbacks to uncontrollable rage. 
These are textbook clinical cases for us counselors. PTSD, right? Absolutely. I can't believe anybody would coerce them into entering battle in their state. Hmm. <laughs> Just goes to show how much faith Liquid has in their combat abilities. That's no excuse. No CSP member, no one with even a shred of conscience, for that matter, would ever treat another human being like that. Conscience? Liquid? Listen, lady. It's more than just a matter of conscience. Without the proper treatment, their symptoms will worsen, eventually leaving them unfit for combat entirely. And that can't be good for their commanding officer. Maybe not, but it suits me just fine. Snake! Look... Maybe it sounds callous to you, but that's how things are out here. We're talking about survival. Well, yes, but... I know what you're trying to say, and your heart's in the right place. Yeah, maybe you're right. I am... Um, I'm sorry I lashed out like that. Forget about it. Snake, there's only one of those things left. Stay focused. The end is in sight. I'll be careful. Snake? First rats, and now crows. Is there anything you want to talk about? Snake, I don't know much about Vamp, so there's not much I can offer you by way of advice, but you do have my unconditional support. Don't let him beat you, Snake. You're the only one who can save Dr. Hunter. Remember to take good care of your sight gauge and finish that monster once and for all. Snake, your sight gauge is running low. You know how that will affect your performance. Wait until the coast is clear, then try to replenish your psych. Listen to me, Snake. In this situation, your aim has to be perfect. You can't afford a single mistake. Avoid letting your psych slip, otherwise your hand tremors will worsen. Your psych gauge should always be a top priority. Snake, your psych gauge is getting low. Your hand tremors must be making it harder to aim. Sooner or later, you're going to miss a shot. As soon as you get a chance, replenish your sight gauge. Got it? I'm sorry things had to happen that way, Snake. But there'll be time to mourn later. For now, you have to get out of there as fast as you can. Go. Time is not on your side here. Keep your cool, but try to hurry. The clock is ticking, Snake. Get out of there as fast as you can. So Liquid finally shows his face. It's the moment of truth, Snake. The man you've pursued all this time is standing right in front of you. I know it's tough to keep a cool head, but stay focused and watch his movements closely. It's up to you, Snake. Eyes on the prize. Come on, Snake! You can win this one! This is it. You finally reached Liquid's home base. I'm here to support you just like always. Snake, promise me you'll finish the mission and come back safely. Snake, you're the only one who can protect Meryl. You've got to do something before they get their hands on her. Snake, you're supposed to be protecting Meryl, not hurting her. Stop it, Snake. Don't let Meryl take any more damage. Snake, you brute. Why would you keep hurting her like that? Ugh! The women of the B&B &B Corps. One laughed, one raged, and one cried. And now the final beast who won't stop screaming. That wailing may be the product of some unendurable fear that's gnawing away inside of her. I can't even imagine what kind of trauma would cause a person to scream like that. Snake, don't forget to keep tabs on your psych level. If it starts to dip, try to get it back up as soon as possible. Snake, your psych age is down. It could start to affect your performance in battle. I recommend you find a safe spot to boost your psych. Snake, this is Mantis we're talking about. The fight on Shadow Moses? That's right. Back then, we defeated him by using multiple controller ports to counteract his mind-reading powers. Snake, try using the same tactic again. Plug the controller into controller port 2. It's not going to work, Roy. Huh? Do you see any controller ports here? Deceiving Mantis is going to take more than simply pushing the PS button to switch controller numbers. But then, that means... It's impossible. Sorry. Well, I'll be damned. Well, so much for the controller. But that beast has another weak spot. Do you remember what it is? Weak spot? You mean the bust modeled on Mantis's true face? The one with all the leather bands wrapped around it? That's the one. Mantis always hated seeing his birth face. Attack that bust and break off the leather seal. Colonel, 
I can't do that. Sure you can. Seeing his true face is sure to break Mattis' concentration. There's no bust. What? There is no bust here to attack. You're kidding. Such agony in those screams. You may be tempted to try and save her, but don't let sympathy get the better of you. Remember the other snake. She wants to kill you. Don't let her get too close. This last one is just like the others. She'll try to kill you with her embrace. Snake, whatever you do, don't let her near you. Go, Snake. You're almost there. Just a little farther. Your psych is doing great right now. Keep going. Snake, look at your psych age. It's close to empty. Keep your psych high in order to get where you need to go. Do what you can to restore it. Your psych has dropped pretty low, Snake. You should recover as much as you can before moving on. Snake, hurry and get through there as fast as you can. Go! Come on, you've got to push yourself. This is no time for therapy. The longer you're in there, the more damage you'll take. Get moving, quick. Your psych is looking low, but right now the only important thing is getting past that room. I know it's hard, but you've got to try. This is the end, Snake. We're all praying for you. Don't let us down. Liquid's good, but don't let him get the best of you, Snake. Finish him, Snake. We're all counting on you.